Good morning, chat. Good morning. Hope that wasn't too loud. I kind of just left the volume all the way up. Um, this is the uh, the login theme for Dante Unbound, which is you know jacked up. Uh, so I know a lot of you probably like Cool Kid. It's 3 a.m. What what are you doing? Um, streaming, bitch. Anyways, just to, you just to get that out of the way up front. Um, before we have any issues. I wanted to stream earlier, but I didn't sleep much, and I was really, really tired, so I just d didn't. But I'm at this weird point where I'm just like, fuck it, I kind of want to talk about the new stuff, and I was going to just wait till Sunday, but it's kind of old news by then, right? Uh, I mean, I've done it before, I did it with Dagath and, uh, and stuff, but I kind of want to get some thoughts out, because there's a lot of stuff to talk about, so... What song is that? Main menu? Yeah, dead ass. Let me get my audio here. So you guys are gonna notice something kinda funny. Let me load in here. Um Let me also double check real quick the credits for the live reaction, because we do have a new one today. I did not leave it as a live here reaction for once. Okay, so this was contributed by Nada over on the Discord. Um it's pretty fucked up, I'm not gonna lie. But you might notice something. We're already in the simulacrum. Uh, so it's going to be one of those days, basically. We also do have the haunts joining us, although I don't expect him to do much other than, like, you know, his, his typical chicanery. Um, say hi to the haunts. Hi. Okay, so there he is. He's just going to kind of be here for moral support, I think. No new simulacrum. Yeah, I'm actually going to, I'm going to kind of go off about that a bit. I haven't bothered like buying it i haven't played the new game mode a ton a ton but um the new simulacrum having an, a higher enemy level cap is so bullshit that is such a stupid idea in my opinion um new simulacrum scene awesome released in support of that objective reason to use it over other simulacrum scenes i don't really like that very much but regardless so um when it comes to the stuff i want to talk about for now. I know normally I don't do this this early in the stream, so I get to feel bad because I feel like people are going to start rolling in later and be like, hey, where, you know, have you talked? About yes. Yeah, I have talked about it. <laughs> um, anyways. So, I want to talk about Dante. I want to talk about Inaros up here. And then some of the new augments and stuff that have changed a lot for characters. Like, I would say that this update through the augments alone has considerably buffed almost everyone that got one, just because a lot of the augments are that good. Um, I haven't messed with a ton of them as much as I should have, but there was some stuff that I was kind of curious about that I got at it. A uh, decent grasp on just kind of preliminary testing of them. So I know most of you are probably curious about Dante, so we're going to start there. And this is kind of a weird thing for me because I think you all respect me enough, right, to know that when it comes to a game like Warframe, uh, I'm generally in the boat that, like, uh, you know... The power level and stuff like that is fine to be jacked up because it's a PvE game and all that kind of thing. Um, Dante is OP as shit. <laughs> like, genuinely to the point where I kind of struggle to have fun because he's so absurdly powerful. Am I advocating for his nerf? I mean, not explicitly. But it's one of those things where I think... Like, compared to the last several frames we got... Um, Dante's overpowered as shit. <laughs> and I'm going to kind of outline why I think that way. So, starting off, um, we'll go through Dante's abilities, which are sometimes these bug out and disappear, but uh, Dante's passive is that his exalted weapon scans targets, and anyone who's fully scanned, you get 50% more status chance. You probably can't read that very well behind the live reaction. So, <laughs> live, the, the, the live reaction to scans targets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So now uh, we have his exalted book, Noctua, which we'll talk about more in depth as I use it. Um, and then Dante's main gimmick, for those who don't know, is basically his ultimate has four different versions. And you access those versions by casting your two and your three in different orders. Um, so for that, your two gives you health and overguard. And then your three inflicts enemies uh, in front of you with a slash proc. So pretty basic abilities on their own, but the combination you use them in gives you different ultimates. So we'll kind of go ahead and talk about those. I don't want to spend too much time on the ability screen um, as I'm going over this. But, 
So when it comes to start, well, yeah, we'll just use the battle group. That's fine. Um, when it comes to start, then, not to as a very powerful weapon for a lot of different reasons. Helios is going to kind of fuck me over on this, I think. Hold on. I should have expected this fucking trash can bastard to ruin my life. Get out of here. Um, just, just respawn that real quick. Okay. So, when it comes to Dante, then. Noctua is interesting for a lot of reasons. Um, the first one is that it can use any number of tome mods. Normally, you're limited to one invocation and one canticle. Um, you can use as many as you want for this one. Also, thank you for the reminder, but yeah, I am on live chat. Um... So, that's interesting in and of itself. But Noctua is also just really good. I think it has very similar stats to the Grimoire, except it is pure slash and has better crit chance. I'll show it in a second. I guess I should have done that earlier. Um, but obviously, its damage also scales with power strength. So, Noctua has some interesting mechanics to it. Its primary fire is very similar to the Grimoire, but its alt fire is very different. It's kind of like a Plasmor shot, almost, uh, in that you know, sort of regard. That is also radiation damage, while well, it's the primary fire slash. So you might notice as I shoot this guy, when a projectile from Noctu hits an enemy, it breaks off into fragments, and they'll span out in an angle and seek nearby enemies. Um, so as, like, as I shoot this guy, yeah, pretty much. It'll break off and it'll seek out other enemies. And then hits with Noctua will recharge the alt fire. So you can get good uptime on, like I have the Zata Invocation on, for example. Um, you can get really decent uptime on that. Uh, so Noctua is one of those things where I feel like a lot of people up front were like, oh yeah, the book's not going to be that good. You'll just stack Tome Mods on it. Like, oh hell no. Um, this thing's really strong just by itself. Um, so beyond just the book then, because those are sort of the interesting mechanics on the, of the book for now. Um... Dante's 2 is very simple, just gives him a small amount of overguard, gives him a small amount of healing as well. It also heals and overguards nearby allies. You might notice in the bottom right I have a little unique UI element, that just tells me what my last two abilities cast were, because that's what's stored for the ultimate. So, and then the 3, just slash procs everyone in front of me. See, it deals decent damage by itself, this is a steel path level. Um, 200, and went through about 40% of the Lancer's health there. So, that was decent by itself. So, when it comes to the ultimate, then, there are four different versions of it. We'll start by doing two of the, the light verse in a row. So, this one is called Triumph. Triumph is... weird. So, Triumph gives you a shit ton of overguard, and also has the added benefit that if you kill an enemy or get a kill assist, you start to generate overguard up to your cap. So basically, as long as this buff is active, you can't take status effects and you can't fucking die. <laughs> Which is an interesting design de decision. Um, Sort of staying in the same vein as these kind of buffs, then. If we do a light and then a dark verse, we get access to uh, one called a Word Warden. This gives you a little floating Noctua. You can see it kind of stuck on the left side of my uh, crosshair there. If I attack an enemy, it will mimic those attacks. So, like, if I shoot it, and it, it kind of uses the same mechanics as Noctua, right, where it has the, uh, the fragments and stuff. It's only 30% damage, so it's not like it's just having another Noctua at all times, but it is a sizable damage buff, and, you know, it, it can spread stuff around, right? So, it's decent just to have one. I believe this is also shared with teammates. So, then, we'll go ahead and generate a new fresh group here. So, that was, uh, the first one was Light Light, and then the second one was Light Dark. So, if you do Dark and then Light... You get one called Page Flight. This spawns some Peregrims that will hit enemies. And uh, now this is a little bit weirdly worded, and I guess I'll just have to double check this at some point. If we cycle to it, it says here status vulnerability. Um, making them vulnerable to status chance is not clear wording. Um, these guys are just kind of fucking stuff up. So I'll be honest with you all on this. I'm not 100% sure at the moment if this means that they take more if they take more status chance or if they take more damage from status effects. I think it's more status chance. I don't know for sure because the game doesn't explain it clearly. If anyone knows for sure, please let me know. I think it's more I mean, status you chance. Could test with but like a fucking 5 or 1% fucking I could I try, know. but it's like the wiki doesn't have a lot of this information oh, yet. Oh, like a fucking 100 you easily just say like 100% what's the status weapon is hit him with like 1. 
and let's see if double like sacrifice would be funny. Because I'm not sure. Here, I guess I could probably take something a similar approach that we want to do with Iron Bride. This is a status chance of 57%. Okay, so it would be impossible for this to proc in one shot. Or to proc more than one status effect in one shot. I guess minus multi-shot. Because, yeah, it just did it there because of multi-shot. Here. Makes your hit, or your three hit for more slash procs. I guess, okay, actually, that's a fair point. If it... That's normally two. Could just test it this way. Where the fuck are the owls? Um... Okay, we left them at home. Oh no, I, I casted it in the wrong order, my bad. Okay, it is more status chance. That's a good point. Okay, because yeah, it does create more, more procs than just the regular two. Okay, yeah, good point. Thank you for pointing that out. So then the last thing for Dante, you might notice I've cast two dark verses in a row, and so I have a new one here. The last one is called Tragedy. Tragedy is basically Expedite Suffering. So if I hit all these enemies with Slash and then cast it... Um, they take all of that as damage. And with Power Strength Scales, a multiplier. So if you look here, my current Power Strength makes this an 11.63 times damage multiplier. They do also take more damage? That's so fucking weird. I wish they would just say that. Status yeah. Vulnerability, my beloved. Let's add more fucking confusing <laughs> stat names. Um... So, I was flying up around as part of my damage rotation. I mean, fair enough. I feel like my my thing with Dante that just kind of makes me hung up is that I feel like he's conceptually really cool, but Triumph and Tragedy are really fucking strong. Like, genuinely, all you have to do to play Dante effectively three, is have three, Triumph three, active, three, four, three, three, four, three, three. and then just literally 3-3-4, three, three, and you will kill most things that are fighting you. Um, and that kind of sucks. Like, I feel like on some level, Dante is just so powerful that a lot of the nuance that could come from utilizing his mechanics is lost on the fact that you fucking killed everything already. Um, like, if you look, I have 54,000 Overguard. I didn't even try to do that. It just happens, right? You cast Triumph like two or three times, and you're going to hit your cap. And you regenerate it on kills. So it's like I have to constantly recast this. I'm going to be getting this back really, really frequently. So, and then like I said, another kind of element of Triumph, or sorry, of Tragedy I should talk about, is it's not like it just affects Dark Verse, right? Like, so for example, Noctua spreads Slash Crocs. It works on those, too. So anything with the DOT off of it, you can use it for, too. Um, need buffs and tragedy and triumph. Need a small nerf. Personally, I think that I could definitely argue that, like, Word Warden could go up from 30 to, like, 50%. Um, and, yeah, I think you could also probably argue that Page Fight could be buffed, though I don't know how necessary that is, at least right now. Um... I do honestly think with how powerful Triumph and Tragedy are, I don't like the idea of advocating for a nerf in a game like this, but I do think they're powerful to the point they make Dante less fun. Because they are so ridiculously powerful that there's no real reason to use anything else. Um, that won't immediately die. I was actually still performing pretty well against the, like, the Culverins and stuff. I guess for, like, boss units, yeah, Dante stuff doesn't particularly, like, with Acolytes and things like that. Which isn't super surprising, because they're, they've always been finicky with status effects. Um, what is his helmet? Yeah, the helmet is Dark Verse. And then his Railjack ability is Light Verse. Um, so, basically, Verdict on Dante... From the day that I've had him, immediate S tier, I've I've struggled to play him on the grounds that I feel like he is so powerful that I start to get bored. <laughs> Anyways, moving on from that, I want to talk about something that I actually think is relatively positive in that vein, and that's an Aros' rework. It could have been a helmet. Unfortunately, unironically, yes. I think that Dark Verse is kind of shit to put on any other character. Um, but. Everything else would have been too powerful. So, Inaros' rework did some interesting stuff. And I have some stuff I kind of want to go into detail about, like, with my shard line up here and whatever. So, Inaros' new passive now is that instead if he takes lethal damage, 
Um, he'll reincarnate himself as a sand shadow with a special melee like fist weapon. And he'll have to go around and punch stuff to revive himself. The number of hits uh, is what that... Like, you don't have to get kills, you just have to hit things enough. Um, so it's only like he'll get nerfed. Um, I can't say for sure because I don't exactly work at Digital Extremes, but I personally wouldn't be surprised. It's one of those things, like, if they just let it lie, I wouldn't care, but uh, my AirPods got stolen. Rest in peace, Blueprint. <laughs> so, other things, then. Desiccation is kind of largely unchanged. Um, the main thing is that you can do finishers from more angles and stuff and on more enemies now. That's a universal change to all finishers in this update, so desiccation kind of got better by proxy. Um... Sandstorm is different. It's now a Naros' 2. So now it heals you and it pulls enemies in and so that when you are done with the ability, it'll just drop them right to your feet as opposed to throwing them around everywhere, which is helpful for reasons I'll outline in a minute. I also have an Elemental Sandstorm and I'll talk about why in a second. Scarab Shell uh, is basically Negation Swarm and a slightly buffed version of Scarab Armor. Um, it's 350 armor at base instead of 200 like it used to be, and I'll go into detail about why I don't think that's actually as low as it sounds. But it gives you status protection, and then you lose 5% of it for every status effect you resist. It's like how it used to work uh, for the old R augment. Um, why am I watching a YouTube live? I'm homeless and have to find a job. I respect that. Uh, <laughs> And then the last one is Scarab Swarm, which is basically completely different from how it used to work. Uh, Inaros, like, shoots out projectiles that'll seek out enemies and swarm them, and then enemies close to the swarmed enemies will also get swarmed. And so they will get staggered, and they'll start to rack up corrosive procs, and the damage of the procs actually scales with Inaros' health. Enemies that die to this will spawn Sand Kitties, and the Sand Kitties will also spread it when they attack enemies. So, um... stacks of status i'm not entirely sure um like i said i wouldn't be surprised if dante gets nerfed but it's one of those things where it wouldn't be the end of the world i feel like regardless i just realized i still have 50k over guard because i played dante i fucking hate the simulacrum <laughs> anyways <laughs> uh, <laughs> so inaros also still has his old passive um that finishers heal him and that extends to ground finishers so like i outlined um desiccation not that different I don't actually know. I guess I shouldn't... Yeah, so... You can't hit enemies with it from behind now. They also have this new icon they added, where if an enemy is vulnerable to a finisher, this appears on them. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this was necessary. I feel like the smoking eyes effect was enough for me, but I guess they want that to be more of a blind thing. Yeah, also, that, that, to be fair, it wasn't a... If you have, like, particle effects on high, uh, a lot of fucking shit, like, uh, with impacts also have, like, white stuff, so it doesn't necessarily mean finishers. And God forbid you have, like, a fucking weapon or someone has, like, a fucking passive that makes enemies, like, glow, like, shake, or like, that, like, for example, like, Rift, or if you're using something like a fucking, I don't know, Ignis for some reason. I'm just trying to prove the point. Reset suit does not clear overguard in the simulacrum. This has been a thing yeah. since Colorbo was added. If you have overguard from any other frame, it sticks. It's so fucking annoying. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> um, so... Desiccation is not super different. Like I, I charged my three there. It's like I said, just how it kind of worked before. You can move during it now, which is cool. My fucking Panzer is gonna make. I swear to God, I never re-equip my Helios on Dante either. Okay, what what the fuck ever? Check this. Check this. We're not even gonna bother with the loadout. I was testing something with this, so just ignore the fact that I have an unmodded path assist on. Um. So that's that. Um, Sandstorm now is pretty short, pulls enemies in at a decent range, and then when it's done, it'll drop them right at your feet. So, important thing about Elemental Sandstorm, the Augment, and why I'm going to argue it's super good. It inherits statuses that are innate to your melee. So, for example, if you have Viral on your melee, like Pathesis does as an innate damage type, it will add that to Sandstorm. It also works with things like melee exposure, where you're able to, uh able to get corrosive off of it and stuff like that so the uh the point i'm trying to make here is that you're able to use it to set up for other things which is going to be very relevant in a second so scarab armor is you know whatever you can move during it now but same thing it always was drains health and you can resist that as effects off of it so that's kind of that so the Scarab Swarm, so you shoot up these projectiles, they'll hit enemies, and then they'll spread it to other enemies, and they'll start taking corrosive stacks. 
What you might notice, though, is the corrosive application is kind of slow. Like, unironically, Voban's armor strip is faster. Influence? Um, I think influence does work. From what Thera told me, influence does work. I think you also did so, something like that. We're not aware of our words. Rug, didn't you? Uh, here, let me see. So, the point I want to make when it comes to... Exposure, at least. The... The 4 is kind of slow with ramping up its corrosive stacks. So if you're trying to full strip with it, it kind of takes a while. Like, if I do this, then I just kind of hang out. See, it's not great. It's like two procs a second or something. Um, so, like, it'll happen, and then it'll spread. And then, like, if I kill a guy, um, it'll turn into a sand cat, and the sand cats will start to spread it too. But it's kind of slow, all things considered. So... My sort of rationale that I had kind of devised to help me fix this problem, it's worked so far for me, is you, you show up, right? You cast this, and then you use um, your Sandstorm with melee exposure. And while these typically aren't enough to quickly armor strip by themselves, with each other, they typically do it pretty quickly. And then at the end of it, they just get dropped at your feet to get killed. So that's been relatively effective for me. Um... As far as I've been playing, influence does work, from what Thera told me. Inadem finisher builds are also really good. Long farm or no? Um, I can't really say. I'm sorry. I'll just confess that exposure. much. That's the fucking one with the electric brush, yeah? Or is it influence? Um, exposure is the one that gives you corrosive damage. Right. I would say, it, I'll do it. from what I've seen, Dante's farm isn't particularly long, but I haven't gone through a round of getting Ember the Helmet yet. I regret to inform you while I am that person who buys the supporter pack, because, you know, it do be like that. Regardless. So, Inaros' rework, I think, is really interesting, especially with, uh... And don't take any of this to heart, obviously, but with the augments, there is now negation armor, which you guys can't see this, I guess. Oh. I didn't know you could do that. You actually can just drag mods into these blank slots. That's weird. <laughs> I mean, anyway, you could always do that. Um, with the negation armor here, then when Anaros takes fatal damage, he consumes scarab armor to heal with a brief invulnerability period that ends with a slash proc cooldown of thirty seconds. So basically, it's another layer of death protection for Anaros. Um, but I think Elemental Sandstorm, especially, is now really strong. Especially with the fact that he can full strip with you know green shards and stuff. Desiccation's curse has been changed. This now spawns uh, Swarm Kavats, and on top of that, uh, the uh, cap is increased. You can just read that here, but I'm also explaining it because, you know, I expect half of you are just listening to this in the background while doing something else, which I respect, regardless of that fact. Um, so, the... Overarching opinion on, I guess, what would be probably the two main things people care about with this update. Uh, Dante is ridiculously strong, and I would say Anaros is pretty good. I don't think he got as big of a glow up as Hydroid did. Which one is the one? Here it is. I don't think he got as big of a glow up as Hydroid did. But at the same time, I don't feel like he's bad at all. I think that he's a pretty good Warframe in his current state. I could definitely see them speeding up the tick rate of his... Uh, of his armor strip and stuff like that, but I still think that he's a really good frame overall. I used him in my Nitro Cells earlier, didn't struggle at all. Other thing, then, are the the new Incarnans. I have been messing with these a bit. The upgrades for them are not nearly as insane as, like, the original Incarnan lineup, but they do have some interesting stuff. I keep forgetting that's not in this menu. So, you've got Fire Rate, Projectile Speed, Weapon Recoil, uh, Magazine Capacity, Reload Speed, and On Kill Chance to Replenish Ammo. Um, on kill 2.5 punch through, which is honestly pretty good if you ask me. Um, more status chance at the cost of crit chance, which I think is stupid because this is a pure puncture weapon, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then headshots build more transmutation charge. And then up here, um, punch through hit increases damage, consecutive headshot stack headshot damage, and hitting enemies in the incarnate form increases critical chance and damage by 5%, stacks up to 50. Um, so... This weapon is kind of peculiar, we'll put it that way. How Onos kind of works is it's an arm cannon that just shoots a laser beam, more or less. It's not hit scan, obviously, because the projectile speed, but it shoots a little, like, laser beam. 
The incarnate form, though, I think is honestly really, like, novel, kind of, in how it works. I gotta just blast through these guys real quick. Get some charge. So the incarnate does this interesting thing, where it's a weapon that you have to charge up like an Opticor, but the charge also deals damage. So basically, while you're charging it, it's almost like a flamethrower, and then it releases a really big shot at the end. Which I think is really cool. It kind of primes enemies for that really powerful shot. Which I think is a neat idea. And it's also just like really intimidatingly large. I don't know how else to say it. This thing is just weird looking. Um, but it's a really cool concept. And in my experience, it's pretty decent. Um, I wouldn't like if you were walking into new incarnates being added thinking they were going to be like Fenmore or Latum, I think you were setting yourself up for disappointment because they're never doing that shit again. <laughs> um, those weapons have all been <laughs> like very, very high tier, we'll put it, since they came out. Especially Fe especially Latum, sorry. Um, Latum is on track to be like the most popular secondary for good reason. But these still have stuff that make them cool. Now, I haven't used Ruvox as much as I should have, because frankly, I don't really like fist weapons, but Ruvox's gimmick, a lot of it revolves around slams. So I guess I probably should have shown the stats for the Incarnan. Oh, right, that one doesn't have them. So <laughs> this uh, gives you three meters of range, less attack speed, and it converts all your impact to puncture damage. This is a pure impact weapon. So... Uh, here we have on kill increased attack speed plus one meter of range or 5% movement speed per melee combo multiplier. This one just seems kind of funny to me, honestly. Um, slam radius. Each enemy hit by slam gains for combo count. So that's the same one that's on Prados, I think. And initial combo. Um, lower threshold to activate incarnate form. Gain a midair jump. And then um, on a finisher, you get 30% combo count chance. That feels kind of low to me. I don't feel like that's that much. And then the last ones, I kind of just add about all of them, honestly. Gain heavy attack efficiency for 20 seconds while impaling five or more enemies. Um, impaled enemies are 35% more vulnerable to status chance, which I guess would play well if you were trying to go into that angle. But it's pure puncture, so you kind of have to take, like, heat or something, I feel like, for that. Um, and then the last one, which I currently got on, is enemies suffer puncture status while impaled. Um, I'll switch it to this for now, I think, but I don't have a DOT on here. I've just, like I said, I've been messing with it. I currently have what's basically like a heavy slam setup, and then I'm using Tenokai to preserve the, uh, preserve that. So, um, Rubox's thing, just kind of when it comes to the Incarnan. I'll get some, get some stacks going here. I do also have the access to that much larger slam radius. So, it basically turns into, like, almost like a weird big claw weapon. Um, so, like I said, reduced melee attack speed. But it has this mechanic where if you heavy slam, it'll skewer enemies in place. And then, you know, you can just wail on them while they're stuck. Which is my rationale for Tenokai, because they did finally fix. Tenokai does work on heavy slams now. Slams were also just buffed in this update they in general. Heavy slams? Um... On release, that was actually fixed relatively quickly, but some people still are under the impression it works that way. It doesn't anymore. Interesting. Um, but so yeah, that skewers enemies. That guy just died actually, so don't count him as an example because he <laughs> he was just weak genes or something. He's probably lactose intolerant. The point I'm trying to make is it skewers them in place, and then you can just wail on them while they're stuck there. So I feel like Ruvox is. I've always had a tenuous relationship with Incarnate Melees, to be honest. I feel like some of them are really fucking boring. Like, I'm sorry, um, who's that talking? If you're anyone that's not me, that's Nitro. He's the emotional support horse. Hi. Um, but he meows sometimes because he's, I think they call it being bisexual. Anyways, yeah, anyways. the, uh... I'm the also he doesn't have to. The... Are impaled enemies considered lifted? I don't think so. That's actually a fair question, and actually one that's relatively easy to test. Watch this. We need consistency. Need a batch of Lancers. Okay, so the typical hit. You... 
Helios really just cannot stop fucking with me. You know what? That's it. I'm cutting your dick off. Okay. Helios can't Helios can't use his glaives anymore. Okay. Take two. Um so a single hit. The text is actually so small I can't read it. Where is the unironically, where's the damage number? Oh, it's it's in Are you guys seeing this? It's in my model. Okay, that's that's six damage. A single punch is six damage. With an impact proc, that goes up to... Okay. Okay, guys, I'm gonna be honest. Maybe using Steel Path level enemies was not a good idea. Because guess <laughs> what? With Condition Overload, it's still six. Because their armor's too high. So we're just gonna, just gonna drop them like level 50. So that I can actually hurt them. Okay. So, single punch. That was... 49. He had an impact proc. 27. With an impact proc, it goes up to 49. Okay. Okay. That's what we need to establish. What we'll do now... Just wail on this guy until I get enough... Uh, stuff to... Transform it. Okay, then Heavy Slam. That was a ground finisher. I probably should have considered that fact. What was that damage number? I didn't actually see it. 85. Huh? What? Huh. Huh, moment. What? Wait, what? Why is it so much higher when they're skewered? I'm... Admittedly, well, if I would stop fucking ground finishing, it would be fantastic. Admittedly a bit perplexed why it was so high. Um, right, because, duh, the incarnate evolution would also increase the damage. Yeah, I need to, I need to punch him again real quick. <laughs> so that yeah. was... Well, that was a crit. Still 47, or up to 47, I guess, rather. No status effects. That was also 47. Okay. Um, Puncture has bonus against armor. Yeah, fair enough. Now that I've done it all in the incarnate form, like I should have to begin with because I'm stupid, Um, it seems it's not because lifted accounts for condition overload. But uh, when I hit that guy while he was skewered, it was still only 47. So I'm guessing the answer to that question is no. As far as I can tell, at least. I also only have on Dreamer's Wrath because it was already pre-polarized for this. When it comes to uh, this stuff, I pretty much always take... Um, oh, what's it called? Yeah, Discipline's Merit. The best Tenokai mod. I will not be taking any questions. Okay, now on to some other stuff, then. Um, so there was a lot of augments that came out that I want to talk about. The first one being the one for Lavos, because I think this one's honestly really interesting. So, Lavos' augment... These guys are too low level for what I'm about to do to them. Not like it matters, but like, yeah. Lavos' augment makes it so that whenever a Lavos casts an ability, um, is tweaking in the arsenal, yeah, he fucking deserves it. I fucking deliberately overdosed him like that one Breaking Bad episode. Oh. Anyways... <laughs> Whenever you cast an ability, you might notice in the top right, I have a new buff called Valence Formation. So this is a new passive that Lavos gets from this augment. So this does not scale with mods in terms of its strength. So it's always 200%, but the duration, I believe, does. So now my weapons have 200% more corrosive damage. But more importantly, all weapon hits will also now guarantee a corrosive proc. Now, these don't stack. So like... If I drop this and do, like, Toxin, you'll notice as soon as I cast an ability with Toxin, it swaps it. So you can't stack more than one element at a time. But this still allows you to do some pretty ridiculous shit. That guy almost got instantly full strip from one shotgun blast. That guy got instantly full strip by one shotgun blast. Okay, now. You throw out a Cedo Glaive. My Cedo armor strips now. This, in my opinion, 
has a ton of potential for a lot of super cool ab applications and really plays into Lavos' theme of like versatility by tapping into the status system. So, for example, DOT. Every single shotgun pellet now procs that DOT. So you start to rack it up pretty quick. If I just like throw this out here. Starts to pretty quickly build stacks of stuff like that. Where did my glaive go? Not important. Um, or for example, I think cold has some applications. Use an ability with cold. What's it doing? Are you guys seeing what the? Okay. Basically, I can now hit an enemy and immediately slow them to like 95%. Fuck yeah. Obviously, they take more critical damage too, but I can see this being useful for a lot of applications. Like, oh yeah, you know, I don't want to run cold on my weapon, but maybe I want to benefit from like primary frostbite. So now I can just offload that to Lavos and get that benefit. Um, or maybe I'm doing some other game mode and it's like, oh, like there's a demolisher or something, or there's an enemy that I'm that's really annoying me, like an exit, I need to slow them because I don't want them to be as big of a problem. Um, that's a lot more accessible now. Same with like if you're fighting a faction like the Corrupted that has mixes of enemies with armor and shields, on the fly you can switch between damage types good for those kinds of enemies. That's cool. So Lavos has a lot more versatility now. Um, and I feel like this does genuinely change the way he plays a lot in a way that's really cool. So this is probably, of all the augments so far, my favorite, because it's got so many interesting applications, and I feel like we haven't really scratched the surface of what it can do yet. Um, another one that surprised me a lot is Loki's. So Loki has a new one now for his decoy. Loki actually got a few changes in this update. Um, for example, if I switch teleport, I get a speed boost, and switch teleport is now um, an upper body action. Or Sorry, it's a two, or it's a one-handed action. I can still shoot. Um, so... I can now move during switch teleport, and it's noticeably faster, which is nice. And I get a little speed boost for it. Decoy also now um, scales with the health and armor of enemies around it. So it's a, it's not going to be like super resilient, but it will resist more damage. Um, I can kind of show that off if I unpause the AI and smoke back in and go invisible. I haven't set the new invisibility yet. If I spawn Decoy, he absorbs all their EHP. Oh, wait, no, I hit the guy. Okay, we'll just talk about the augment, and we'll talk about this later. So, you might notice this Bombard is basically killing himself. Um, how this augment works is if you cast Decoy on an enemy, they basically get marked, and then enemies that hit them will reflect their own damage back into themselves and inflict themselves with five random status effects. So, now Loki can basically just make enemies prime themselves, and on top of that, it's kind of almost like a weaker pocket version of um varuna's too and that like i hit an enemy with it and now these guys are going to just prime themselves and deflect a decent amount of damage into themselves a lot of the time too like so you guys saw earlier that bombard killed himself by attacking the enemy so this kind of is almost like a splice between like fangs of rash and resonator i guess and I mean that in a very positive way. And then on top of that, just like decoy in general now. Um, still not super strong. This isn't as strong as it normally would be, because normally you cast this in like a much bigger group, and so more things would be close to affect it. But it doesn't die in one shot anymore. Also, the 40k overguard is from when I was playing Dante. There's a bug in the simulacrum where if you get overguard, it doesn't go away. Yeah, no, they just, they just buffed an hour. has like 40k like base fucking... <laughs> yeah, that's just a new part of Loki. Um, Anyways, so Loki's is really cool as well. Um, and Deceptive Bond. I don't actually know how that works, but that would be really fucking funny. Can you take both of those at the same time? Oh. Which one's that again? You can't. Oh, that's tragic. Deceptive uh, Bond is where you and your decoy basically share damage. Uh, um, so you just cast funny. it on someone and kill yourself <laughs> <Yeah>. instantly. <laughs> okay. As for other ones that I had found that I thought were really good then, and just in terms of the, uh... Oh yeah, that's another thing. I should do this while I'm just here. Um, invisibility now has its own thing here. So you have regular cloak, and then you have what's called semi-cloak, which just makes you transparent, and then glow cloak, which just puts a glow effect around you so you can still see your fashion. So, and yeah, I'm cloaked, but I can still see myself, which is nice. Still have the piss filter, you know, it's like going to Mexico and Breaking Bad. Never really liked that about, um, Loki. I should probably go ahead and just swap that on a few frames while I'm thinking of it. Yeah, same. 
grab not semi cloak, grab glow cloak, the and woke. then uh, Varuna. Grab that as well. Uh, I'll get the others later. Um, so another one that's actually really good in my opinion is Chromas. So Chromas is interesting because I feel like it finally offloads the need to give him a way to heal himself through like the helmet or something. This is actually going to be a lot more helpful if I just take damage for this and chew through the overguard. But so Chroma's augment is that uh, like allies that take damage near him will share a portion of the damage to his health. But in exchange, kills will heal him for a portion of his health. So this allows Chroma to heal now. And on top of that, um, it lets him, you know, allies can heal him too because their kills will also do it. So the important thing about that to me is that Chroma can actually heal himself. Oh, if yeah. I kill an enemy, I will start to gain my health back. And I felt like for the longest time, Chroma basically had to offload that to a helmet ability, and it was a big weakness of his, in my opinion. Another yeah, thing that makes like, this yeah. good is um, every kill gives you one second of Vex armor back. So this yeah. also helps offload. It helps with Chroma's energy economy because you're not spam recasting it. It reduces the risk of you running out of Vex armor on accident, and you can obviously still recast it if you get if you're getting too low. But this also means that duration isn't as uh, high a priority because you can maintain it more easily and of course I'm, I'm kind of a bitch with running high duration on chroma is if i cast elemental ward i can't can't decast it right so there is some flexibility there if like the lower duration can be helpful for that ability if you are finding yourself cycling it often this is a one second scale with duration i don't think so let me double check i don't believe be so really funny if I'm dead. this is also a lot currently very experimental uh, no, the duration does not scale. The health absorption does scale with strength, though. Damn. So basically, you get that over three seconds. Um, so every time I get a kill, you know, I, I get that health regeneration. Um, kill these guys. So this gives Chroma a way to heal himself and maintain his three, which is a big problem for him, is constantly losing it. So, also, yeah, I agree, uh, Keegan. The new Cyandana, both of them are really good, actually. There's the one for Dante which I really like. And then there's also... This skin finally made it into the fucking game. This one used to be called Corviday. I think it's now called Ezreal. It's Cyandana is also really cool. Regardless of that, though. So, when it comes to other augments, then, I haven't messed with this one that much, but there is that, one that for your rally. Sorry, I'm interrupting you, but that, that Cyandana looked like a fucking Linus shift from FTL. I think... Yeah, I haven't... I, I didn't have this on. Yeah, you can't run it with Marilina Guardian. I actually forgot about that. Um, so that's something to consider, but Marilina now just follows you around. I believe that Yoreli still has the damage reduction. I can kind of double check that. Yeah, I definitely do. Um, and it will just cast Sea Snares periodically. As far as I'm aware, these stack in terms of damage with Yoreli's. I don't know if that's a bug, though. It might be. So, this allows Yoreli to actually, you know, use her primary and her melee, and... Ow! Um, Marilina basically becomes a little just, like, drone that'll just help Yoreli out, which is kind of cool. Uh, because it'll just periodically cast Sea Snares and stuff. Let me kill these off real quick. I haven't played with this one that much, though, and my rationale for that... Like, this absolutely has use. Yeah, see? Marilina follows her and casts Sea Snares on enemies' two-second cooldown. So... I am kind of of the opinion, when it comes to Yoreli, that if I'm not using Marilina, am I really playing Yoreli? I feel like it's such a big part of her identity that I kind of, even if I find it actively annoying at times, um, I actually like being bound to the K-Drive because it feels so, like, essential to the experience of playing her. But if you've liked her other abilities and don't want that part of the Yoreli experience, so to speak, you can just forgo it, forgo it now. You can just turn her into, like, a DR and, you know crowd control drone essentially um what else umbra got one that i'm kind of happy with that being umbra now has an exilus mod where you can disable umbral sentience for 15 percent power strength um i just honestly always found umbral sentience annoying because it would constantly make him go get himself killed if i was trying to heal him or he would uh like decast an ability or what have you so, this is just kind of a preference thing. I'm just glad that it's in the game now, so I can use it. I do also believe... 
yeah, that my buffs through operator form stay now if I have this active, because, you know, Umbra doesn't get rid of them. So, that's nice. I, I appreciate this augment. That's about all I have to say about it. I appreciate this augment. Kill all these guys real quick. The good old uh, Thousand Degree Knife versus Grenier Lancer challenge. <laughs> okay. Lobotomizes your Umbra? I mean, pretty much. Where Subsume won't be annoying to use. And that's fair, too. That does also let you play into your Helminth more on your Relly um, by kind of dumping the skateboard into, you know, its kind of own category. Um, Color Vos, I actually haven't messed with at all, so I guess we can just do a little bit of look. Because uh, Color Vos is Storm of Ugo. Or, yeah, Wrath of Ugo. So basically, Wrathful Advance moves the Storm of Daggers to the teleportation location. So cast this. And then it just teleports it to me. I can see this being really useful in certain contexts, but not for the way I played this character. Also, I did talk about the Loki Augment a little bit ago, yeah. Um, TLDR, it's very good. I think this could be nichely helpful, but not for the way I play Colorvo, so I'm not going to use it, and that's kind of the end of that situation for me. I don't think it's an amazing Augment, necessarily. Um... Who else? Baruch. This one's interesting, because for the longest time, I think a lot of people would agree. Um, Baruch was always just kind of would just lose Elude. Like, Elude has always been a really good ability, but it's always been kind of a helmet slot. So now what happens is every time you dodge a projectile with Elude, it gives you an increase, uh, base 5%, increase in uh, both melee attack speed and melee critical damage. Uh, and that stacks up to six times and scales with power strength. So I have 200% strength, so it stacks up to 60%. And so obviously you can take advantage of that with Desert Storm. I want I want to play with this one more. It sounds conceptually interesting. It also kind of changes because like oftentimes I would stack a shit ton of strength to. Um, to like keep the knives up so that I have as much DR like possible padding as possible between my DR and my health, uh, or be between my like DR and losing my DR. But now with Elude being uh, you know able to just completely dodge attacks, I don't think it's as big of a deal if you start to lose your knives. Um, crit red crit Baruch, huh? If you build one combo on Exalted, that's interesting. I hadn't heard about that. Hopefully they do fix it. I never played them that way, I guess. I typically would just use, like, Crit Kitty and uh, Avenger for that kind of thing. Pretty. Um, another one is Neja. Neja's Augment oh, yeah, is also that's... super good. So, Neja's Augment basically works like this. You spear a bunch of enemies. Enemies that are caught in the spears now share status effects. See, all these enemies are getting these heat procs. And then, like, if I use this, they're all going to share those status effects with each other. It's a bit of a weird example, because, like, if they die before, you know, the effect kicks in. So, this to me is kind of like, uh... Um... Just build combo with Baruch, not a big deal. Uh, they also finally nerf Exodia Contagion. I don't think so. And honestly, I don't particularly care about Contagion being nerfed personally. Um, I was worried he wouldn't have enough. Yeah, dead ass. I feel like a lot of that for me personally is the melee attack speed is nice because Desert Wind is so slow. Why are you still alive? Anyways. So, I feel like this kind of has a similar thing as something like Mark for Death. Where you'll pull up to a group, right? Hit them. And then you'll find a beefy enemy... And just start, you know, loading them with status effects. That will spread to everyone else in the group and kill them. So, a green shard Neja armor strip pack. You absolutely could do this. Um, I don't personally have that set up on here. But that's something you absolutely could do if you wanted to. Just the entire idea of, you know, sharing them I think is really interesting. One I haven't played with almost at all, and I'll kind of illustrate why is Citrine's. So Citrine got one called Recrystallize. We will, just for the sake of this, drop stretch for it, I guess. So Recrystallize... This might be a little bit tricky if there's so many enemies here, but we'll try it. So basically, there's an enemy crystallized like this. 
Of course, it hit pretty much all of them. If I kill them, um, they'll stagger and crystallize nearby enemies. I guess this would probably be better if I... Here, watch, watch this. Watch this. This will work. This will work. Spawn the two butchers. Sure. And then we'll just drop this. And then we'll... Yeah. So this guy is crystallized. Kill him. Crystallizes nearby enemies. I don't think that's supposed to work like that. Um. Is this augment bugged? That, you'd think that would... Hmm. I think that would lock them in place. Oh, dear. Um, like I said, I hadn't played with this one yet because it sounded so underwhelming to me. I guess this kind of reinforces that decision because that is not supposed to happen. Ah. Um, you know, normally they're supposed to get held in place to be easy to shoot, but I accidentally turned him into fucking Diamond Head. <laughs> the reason I don't find this augment that en enticing personally, um, even if it f actually did freeze enemies, because that would definitely be helpful... But when it comes to the effect of um, Crystallize, let me put Stretch back on. The thing with Crystallize is the uh, if you can naturally Orange Crit or higher, I think even in some contexts Yellow Crit, because of the Headshot Multiplier, Headshots deal more damage than Recrystallize. So, because for those who don't know, Crits have another 2 times Headshot Multiplier on top of the regular one. So, um, crystals are really good for, like, high-status weapons. Steflos here. Steflos likes the crystals because it doesn't have the crit chance um, to really take advantage of the headshot stuff. So, it can utilize them pretty well. I also obviously have a vendor on here as well, which, you know, helps my case. But... Also, yeah, Steflos does work if you're using Citrine pretty much exclusively. Um, because this gun kind of kind of blows otherwise. Basically, um, if you have a weapon that is able to, you know, crit headshot, it's not that helpful. So I just didn't feel like slotting it for that reason. I could definitely see it being useful. Um, but I do think that if I need more crystals, I'm just going to push the button again. If you put equilibrium, equilibrium on Citrine and have sufficiently high power strength, you basically have infinite energy. So I'm not really particularly concerned with that. Just get rid of these guys real quick. Is that Lancer still alive? I think he's dead. I guess there's one way to find out, right? Yeah, he is. Okay. Who else? I have to think about this. I think I've gone through most of them. Right, Nidus. Nidus is as weird. So, Nidus got one that's interesting for a very particular reason. So, Nidus's augment is this one right here, Parasitic Vitality. Parasitic Link, uh, Nidus and an ally he's bound to gain 4% max health per mutation during Parasitic Link. So that's pretty good. Um, if you have really high mutation stacks, like if you're at full, this is 400% more health. Here's the thing, though. It's a Vitality. So... Early on, I'm fucking weak. Like, if you look up at my health there, it's at 650. If I'm Parasitic linked to somebody, then yeah, it'll be much better when I'm at full mutation stack. But if I haven't set up yet, I'm just gonna die. <laughs> so we're not slotting that one in. Um... I think it has potential. I'm just not exploring it. The last one, as someone just pointed out in chat, is Styanaxes. I actually haven't tested this one at all yet. I forgot it existed, I'm going to be perfectly honest. This is, yeah, this one. Um, Axios Javelin, a pair of Spectres. Uh, yeah, a pair of Styanax Spectres spawn to throw Javelins, create Vortexes on impact, and pale an enemy to increase the Vortex duration. So, give this a shake real quick. Yeah, so it looks like... Oh, that even makes Cyanax's initial spear um, 
It makes Diane act as initial spear a vortex too. Normally you have to impale an enemy for that, and then I guess if I impale an Ooh, this has some meme potential. I think if I just keep impaling an enemy, it'll just keep refreshing the duration. So it seems like, just from my gathering here. Yeah, you can just like keep spamming it into a group to keep it going. I guess it's just better vortex capabilities. Throw it at the ceiling. Oh, fair point. <laughs> oh, that goes hard as fuck. Thank you for suggesting that. That's amazing. Look at him go. Look. <laughs> oh, hell yes. All right, this makes us augment immediately S tier purely on comedy factor. Holy shit. Um. Fucking thank you, Fancy Killer, for that suggestion. That's hilarious. Anyways. So I guess I could definitely see that being good. Um, especially because you can, you know, group them up a lot more. Because for those who don't know, right? Styanax already has the mechanic where he, if he spears an enemy and they collide with the surface, they spawn a vortex. So it seems like this just kind of offloads that, where, like, he gets more vortexes, so he's got better crowd control potential, and then instead of needing to get a direct hit for that... Um, oh, yeah, this this time I'll still never use any wall because I don't touch it ever. Um, but instead of uh, the hit rocking it, you just need to uh, do that to extend the duration. So that's neat. I could definitely see that being a lot of fun. And of course, pulling enemies into the ceiling is really funny, so there's uh, there's that, obviously. Um, yeah, I know, so-called free thinkers. Is this the right one? No, it is this one. Okay. So let me double check. I think I've covered all of them, because there were 11, right? I think I've talked about all of them. Um, how bad was the Nourish nerf? Not that bad. Um, Nourish went from 2 times energy to 1.6 times, and then it went from 75% uh, viral to 45%. So, it's def you're going to feel it. It's not going to be, like, infinite energy anymore, but it's still going to be very good, I think. I don't think it'll make it not worth running. Eclipse, on the other hand, I think you all yeah. know that Eclipse got murdered. Rip. The rationale that DE explained was that they wanted to bring it in line with Roar and then make the difference that Roar is better for pure damage because it double dips with DOTs and effects abilities, while Eclipse has flexibility because you also have the damage reduction. I can see that line of thinking, but you can't deny that they did just kind of nuke Eclipse off the face of the planet. Um, regardless of that, though, Speaking of Eclipse, I want to talk about Mirage real quick. So, what build do I have on? There's Nourish on this one. Oh, yeah, this is the Prism Guard one. I don't know what the fuck I'm cooking on this, actually. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> I have not touched this in a really long time. I'm genuinely confused right now. Um... I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna put this here for now. Um, this makes sense, and I'll explain why in a second, actually. But, okay. We'll fuck with it later, I don't care. Um, so here's what happened with Mirage, right? So now Mirage has, right, Eclipse is different, so that you tap for the DR, you hold for the damage. Um, not much to say about that, really. I think the damage is now 200% at base, and the DR is now caps out at 90%. There's also a new mechanic that involves uh, the Disco Ball. So if you're in light form with Disco Ball, Disco Ball deals double damage. And I believe hits with Disco Ball progressively ramp up the damage now, which used to be a mechanic if you were standing in the light. It was based on light level. Now it's based on the hits from the Disco Ball. So you might have noticed, this isn't a build specifically built for this, and it killed a bunch of Steel Path level shit. The other thing in that vein is, if you have Dark Mode active, it's 50% less energy cost. And this is calculated after efficiency, so it can actually exceed the normal efficiency cap. So, that's an interesting little... Basically, Disco Ball was already strong and they buffed it, which I think is great. The build I was running on this previously, Prism Guard here... Oh, 
which was just like a something I would use in like ESO. The disco ball. I do indeed love the disco ball. And then yeah, blinds him at the end. So Disco Ball got a lot better. I already think Disco Ball was really good. Mirage, in general, I actually think got decently buffed by this update. The helmet version of her ability got murdered, but Mirage herself, I actually think, got decently buffed. I do want to talk about something, though, that I think a lot of people don't understand. Um, and that's in regards to the change to the night form of Eclipse. And this is going to be difficult to explain. So I'm going to try and do this as best as I can. So, you all probably know, um, this is now 90%. It used to be 95. It's a difference of 5%. That's not a, a huge deal. Um, what if I told you that they actually, that's a huge nerf? And I completely understand why they made that nerf, because originally the trade-off was that it was really high DR, but you weren't able to consistently utilize it. And frankly, it may as well have not existed, because it was never active, but... 90% 90, 90 DR and 95% DR is a much bigger gap than most people realize, and it's kind of hard to explain, but 95% DR is actually twice as effective as 90% damage reduction. So, to explain this, um, say I have 200 health. So just a 200 health, no damage reduction, and an attack deals 20 damage. Okay, so that attack deals 20 damage. That means it takes 10 hits to kill me. Okay, so if I have 50% damage reduction then, um, I have 200 health still, that hasn't changed, but now the enemy's attack deals 10 damage per hit. So, instead of taking 10 hits to kill me, now it takes 20. So, that's double the effective health. The damage reduction, uh, if you figure it as effective health, where it's like, okay, with this damage reduction, I effectively have this much extra health. Um, once you start thinking of it that way, it starts to become clearer how DR actually works. Because I think that the percentage is kind of difficult to process for most people. So then, in the event of 90% DR, right, I have a 20 damage attack hitting my 200 health, 90% of that damage is gone, now it deals 2 damage, okay? So now it takes 100 hits to kill me. 95% DR, take away 95% of the damage of that 20 at uh, damage attack, now it's 1 damage. Now it takes 200 hits to kill me. So, when you figure it as the effective health multiplier, as opposed to, like, getting fixed on the percentages and the relative change between those, um, 90% DR is half as effective as 95% DR. Um, I know that's probably not super clear in the way that I explained it, but the point that I'm trying to make here is, if you figure it in that manner of, like, how much health do I effectively have from my DR, it, it becomes easier to, like, wrap your head around how it actually works. This is why I also genuinely argue that adaptation is totally worth using on frames with DR abilities, because even though the DR, you know, it's not that much of a percentage increase, um, it's still going to be very helpful, because you're still going to get mileage out of the increase in effective health. So, 5% reduction, sure, that sounds relatively, um, whatever, on paper. In practice, they made it half as good, but I honestly don't think that's a massive nerf, um, in practice, because you weren't fucking, you weren't getting the DR anyways. Armor is exponential. N not necessarily. Armor in this game, and specifically, is actually linear, but it's not in a way that's intuitive. So, this is kind of a side tangent, but how armor works is essentially for every 100, or for every 300 armor you have, you get 100% more effective health. So, 300 armor is 50% damage reduction. That's two times effective health. 600 armor, I think, is what, 67% damage reduction? That's three times effective health. Um, 900 armor is 75% damage reduction. That's four times effective health. So every chunk of 300, you get another 100% effective health. Or every 100, you get, you know, fucking 33% more, if you want to look at it that way, for some dumb fuck reason. Anyways, so that's how armor works. There is something... It, <laughs> I'm kind of throwing Sab under the bus, putting it this way, and I'm not saying this to, like, spite him. I just kind of want to prove a point about it. In his Chroma video, for those of you that have seen it, he talks about how the difference between 2,000 armor and 3,000 armor is basically nothing, and I think he's hyperfixating on the percentage, because in the wiki calculator he uses in that shot, you can see right under the percentage he goes from 7 times effective health to 11 times effective health. So it still very much does something. Um, It's just that the... uh. 
the, the percentage is not what you should focus on, I guess. Let me put it that way. The effective health multiplier makes it way easier to get your head around how this stuff actually works. Um, light mode, yes. Light mode boosts ball damage, and innately, the more times an enemy is hit by the ball, the more damage they take from it. Um, which is a brand new mechanic that was based on the fact that it used to be updating dynamically based on the light level of the room Mirage was in. So, Disco Ball is way better now, which is funny because I honestly thought it was already really good. So, that's kind of the, the rundown on Mirage, uh, I guess. I don't think... I've been doing this for literally an hour. I'm guessing Nitro just fucking died at his desk I'm, at I'm this right point. Here. I'm right here. Um, <laughs> so, that's the rundown on Mirage. I need to... I just... Okay, what the fuck was I doing with this? This is nefarious. This originally... <laughs> why was my range so low? <laughs> I'm actually confused what I was doing with this setup. I don't have anything else I can put in here, though, which is profoundly annoying. I could just take Adaptation and, you know, hang up the hat, I guess, if I wanted to. But, like, what? This grosses me out. You know what I mean? This makes me feel uncomfortable. I look at this, and I want to throw up. Like, what am I... What? I mean, like... I don't know. Something about this makes me uncomfortable. Let's just put it that way. Something else makes me profoundly uncomfortable. Hall of Malevolence. I mean, kind of base. That used to be really good. Um, I actually don't use this ability that much. This can go. Um, <laughs> this is a really fun augment. Even after it's nerfed, by the way. Um, the two augment. This is probably a better generic build that just kind of spec and do a bit of everything um shouldn't have like for real yeah i will i have a bad habit of making very just ge generalized builds because i don't really want to focus hard on one stack because i want to use all the abilities this is stupid don't do this <laughs> what oh. wait what the f did you guys see that why did that oh that's weird isn't that isn't that what the augment does? Huh? Why did that do that? She has decoys. Also, fair enough. The question is, Zer, what the fuck am I going to put in these slots? They're Ds. I don't know. Fucking... Sorry. <laughs> Amar's hatred. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'll just have to reforma these at this point. Primed redirection. Forma? Yeah, dead ass. Um. But I thought that was the effect of EL. What the fuck? Yeah, ammo and ore pit. What the why the fuck did that happen? <laughs> Get more pickups. Or is it that the guaranteed proc? Okay. So they still explode, they just didn't proc any status effects. Huh? I don't like that very much. Also, I personally am not a fan of full full Archon with EL, and the reason for that is pretty simple. Um, Vitality and Continuity, yeah. Um, Stretch, I didn't really want to bother with. You could take it. Um... I just don't like Archon Flow. It feels really inconsistent to me. Realistically, on this build, like, I could take it. I have the space. I just don't think I'll ever see it. Um, actually activate. Is it Stretch? You can definitely take if you want. I don't think it's bad, but I'm not a huge fan of Archon Flow in general. That's just a personal thing, though, I think. Um, so this is just really generic and bad. Um... About the red line. I have not bought the red liner emote, no. Speaking of, by the way, though, you make you remind me of something. Oh fuck, what companion did I have on this? Hmm. You know what? We're just gonna call it a day. You can just have you can just have the dog. Which one is the one that I need? That's fine. You can just have the dog. Um 
fucking dogs. Anyways, do I need to give Dante back his? Yeah, I do. Um. So speaking of that stuff, who bros got their fur overhaul finally after multiple fucking years. But here's something that miffs me, right? So Kubros look better now. This is using a skin with no fur. Okay, um, take two. Where the fuck is a Kubro on this goddamn? Yeah, you. So Kubros are a lot hairier now. And that's cool. Their fur generally looks better, if admittedly kind of weird. Um, here's what pisses me off. Can I really not search by my companion's name? I think Ash has it equipped. Kavat hair is still missing. The ear tufts are still gone. And the hair on my back is still gone. They took... They took Big Floppo's fucking hair. I was honestly so sure they would have fixed this in this update because the whole thing was hair related. Kavats are missing their fur. It bothers me so much. Look how slick and shiny he looks. It looks like he's a like a he looks like he's made of plastic. It bothers me so much. I I, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> Managed to play without Smita, I can't get rid of it. Um it's called being based. Oh what wait, what the fuck is happening to my skin? Huh. <laughs> Digital extremes. I'm gonna turn off DND. Thank you, Phoenix. Um close tab. Anyways. DND, so I can never be messaged again. Well, my Ash is currently tweaking the fuck out. Um, what else? I think that's kind of all the major stuff I wanted to talk about. The Duveri intrinsic stacking bug still hasn't been fixed, which I think is hilarious. Um, I have become the K drive. Passives are also listed here now, which is nice. Um, they made some changes like mods, where, like if you're holding a mod that fits into a slot. I took Transient Fortitude off. I was to go and put it back on. Matching polarity slots are highlighted, and then like uh, negative ones if it was free or red, which is just kind of cool. Um, some stats have been like reorganized and have like substats when you hover over them now that explain what they actually mean. So there's been some just like general, you know, quality of life improvement stuff. In that regard, the Karudo bug. I haven't heard of a bug with Karudo. Did they bring back the lifesteal on accident? Also, oh, yeah, yeah, the orbiter... Here, I can just go back and talk about this. I believe it was Orbiter and Drifter Camp have both received the new GI lighting. So, yeah, Orbiter's lighting is way different now because it's using the new lighting system. Also, show Equinox build? No, it sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't really like playing her that much. I've always thought she was boring, so I've just never really put a ton of uh, effort into her. Also, yeah, that is another thing. Gear wheel fast travel. This also works in relays, which is just kind of nice. Hell yeah. Um, shards have been moved from Chipper to Bird 3. And there's just no lighting. That's pretty funny, honestly. I think that got fixed in the last hot fix, though, because they released one right after I downloaded the update. Um. So thank God my Ash skin isn't fucked. You know, we'll mess around with. I haven't played Sevagoth that much. I really like this skin, and this is just kind of what I'm currently working with in terms of the uh, the fit, we'll call it. But I'll show you all. I don't know what the current day-night cycle is, but it will affect the look of the Drifter Camp significantly. We're doing Steel Path Drifter Camp, so be careful. Um, did you not get the free Cyandana? Uh, which one? Unless you're referring to, like, uh, like a gift of the load, or uh, of, like, one of the, uh, dex alerts. Require rank 5 with Kavia. Bad change. Um, that is kind of whatever. I don't know. Inbox one? Bomb. I think I already had that one. If not, I don't fucking care. I don't like it that much. Um, Operator Drifter hair got nothing on real. The weird thing is that there are different types of hair that use different technologies for that stuff. Also, yeah, Drifter Camp's lighting, I feel like, was always really weird in the past. But now with the GI, I think it looks a lot more consistent. And uh, I like that. I think it looks a lot better. My wings are blocking so much of my screen, I should not be doing it this way. 
what skin is that? Uh, Sevagoth got a new one. This is his first Tenogen skin, and this motherfucker has been out for nearly three years. God, Tom. Um, I have been following this one since it was first posted to the workshop. And uh, it looks fucking awesome. Here it is with uh, no customizations attached. Anyhow, pick a frame with less intrusive fashion. We'll do... I don't know, Valkyries is relatively unintrusive for me. Um... Oh yeah, that's another thing to mention. Two more operator sets have been transferred to Drifter. I don't actually know if I have these ones. Um, yeah, Smelter. And where is it? Maybe I just don't have it, so it's not showing up. Um, I believe it's Smelter and Haztec. So those two Fortuna armor sets for Wait, operators. Those ones are Drifter now. Um, yeah, Smelter and Haztec. Oh my god, so finally! That's, like, the one with the gas gas mask, and the one with, like, the, uh, like, Isaac Clark face mask, I think. Um, also, Phoenix, it's under Appearance, Attachments, Auxiliary, is the invisibility stuff. So, yeah, those both got ported. Um, has Caliban gotten Tenogen yet? He has one alt helmet. <laughs> This door is still weirdly lit. I'll say that much, but... So yeah, Drifter Camp is really pretty, especially with the GI lighting. For those who don't know as well, GI lighting is just a new system that replaces the old one they had. Um, I, you know, I don't feel like Wisp really needs it because she's already mostly visible during her invisibility and she's not invisible all the time anyways. Um, likes to assume he knows nothing. How are the Loki buffs? His augment for his decoy is super good, and the speed boost is a nice change. Um, also, Caliban, they said during the PAX Q&A that there's something in the works for him. Um, basically, their response was ask Pablo at Tenocon, more or less, but I'm almost positive it's been said by Pablo as well that Caliban's on the radar. Um, also, you can restore Ordis to his pre-Noir look by going into the settings, um, and then enabling creator mode, which hides certain common spoilers and some other stuff. But then again, you can't um, actually pet or hug the animals on the fucking... Yeah, for some reason, if you have spoiler mode enabled, you can't hug the Kavya, which is so but gay. You can still see the, uh, you know, spoiler thing that you can do to them after you complete the, uh, to five, so like, Lamral. Well, I think... I feel like... Um, how do you customize Invis here? I'll just show it, because I haven't done it on Avara yet. So I might as well do this while we're here and just go to attachments, auxiliary, and then you have the regular one, semi cloak, which just makes you partially transparent, and glow cloak, which gives you a glow effect, but you're still visible. Enemy perception is not affected by this. They'll still treat you as if you're invisible. Um, but that's just like a visual thing. Who else? I guess I need to change this on Octavia, because I believe she also can have it. I don't ever play this bitch, but you know, might as well. Yeah, honestly. Um. Who else has a cloak? Let me just run through the list real quick. Did you? Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Oh yeah, Gara's passive got changed. I should mention okay. this. Um, because they removed the lighting gimmick. Also, wow, the glass on her helmet looks way different in this lighting than the glass oh. on her body. Um, now every basically Gara has a 15% chance when casting an ability to create a radial blind, and every time that doesn't trigger, it goes up by another 20% until it does trigger and then it resets back down. Oh, last night. So Um, that's cool. Let me keep going through the list. Uh nope, 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 nope. No, no, no. Did you? No, no, no. No, did you? No. No, no. Nope, nope. Um, I think I have everyone. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty sure I did that. Did you talk about the Eclipse changes? Yeah. Um, for Mirage, I think they're a buff, especially with the uh, synergy to her Disco Ball. Helminth got nuked, but we all knew that already. Also, wow, well, thanks for stopping in, uh, Napkin. I saw Eliu a bit ago, but I don't know if he left or what. I feel kind of bad because I saw his message, but it got pretty quickly swept up. Um, I hate the Gara change. It was something, you know, passive that would happen when he just stood around. The thing with that is that it was inconsistent. They changed the way that, like, 
walking into lights happened. Oh, okay, there he is. Um, but because of that, I personally actually kind of prefer it on the grounds that there is a guarantee that it will trigger eventually. Um, he is too loud. Honestly, fair enough. <laughs> um, I like, sorry, Caps. Yeah, it would appear you're too loud as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that's everyone. I'm still in the Drifter camp, aren't I? I need to get out of here. Also, unfortunately, they removed the Archon Shard from uh, Chipper. And they didn't give him anything else. So I hate to say this, but unironically, there is basically no reason to do the Calm missions anymore. Unless you want to sell off Archon mods or something. Which is kind of shit. <laughs> um, I wish they would have given him something else. Because now I genuinely don't know if I'm going to bother with my weekly call mission anymore. Because what's the fucking point? Like, this... I hate this as well because they gave call stuff to make him more fun. Like, they gave him random weapons you can find and stuff. And they just took away the only thing that made call an evergreen system. Because you do it for the Archon Shard. And now that's gone. Personally, I think they should have just left it with him. Or maybe give him some other evergreen thing you can purchase for stock, especially now that it's grindable. Like, I don't know, Kuva or Relic Packs or some bullshit. Because now, once you buy everything out from the store, what the fuck is the point? Hmm. Um, so I'm not a huge fan of that. I hope they give Chipper something to compensate. Because right now, I don't think there's a huge point in, like, bothering with the system. The lighting in here affecting this helmet the way it does is bothering me immensely, and I'm, I don't like it. Um... Without arcanes like Colorbo and Dante. Yeah, you're kind of just stuck with like, well, once I'm full on this currency, what do I do? Buy fucking 100,000 credits? N no. <laughs> Why did Bird swipe the shard? I think the goal was to try and centralize the source of Archon shards. But at the same time, I think it was a worthless change. Because you want to know how you get Archon hunts? Doing Veilbreaker. You also know what you unlock through Veilbreaker? Fucking call missions. Missions. So it yeah. made sense. <laughs> The Abyss alongside Arcwing, Railjack, Defection, and Infestive Salvage. I will not take any disrespect towards Railjack, even if it has been forgotten, purely because it's fun. Anyways. <laughs> Dante's going to get the Steinax treatment. They're probably going to lower his base overguard cap. Honestly, my guess for Dante, to rein him in, if they do nerf him, his overguard cap, I think, is going to go down. Um, I think his overguard cap is going to go down from 15,000 at base to, like, 10,000, maybe even lower. Um, and I also think they're probably going to nerf the damage multiplier of Tragedy from three times to maybe, like, two. Um, can we merge crystals now? Yeah, we can. I can show that real quick. Um, DE wants more people to get rank 5 Kavya because it'll be relevant in the future. Well, it's also used for, like, the Deep Archimedia and stuff now. Um... But I don't know. I feel like Call just kind of got wasted. Also, I'm focusing mostly on strength with uh, range and a little bit of duration. I actually need more duration on this. Thank you for reminding me. Um, precision intensify for tragedy primarily. But I want... How do I want to do this? I want a little bit more duration, basically. Because having to constantly recast my... Uh... Oh yeah, that was how I was going to do this. Right, right. I just don't think I ever actually pulled the trigger on it. I was going to drop Transient Fortitude entirely. I hate this game sometimes. <laughs> Secrets. Pop this in here. And then Prime Continuity. This might seem weird. Because it is. Um, I want more duration so I don't have to recast my like Page Flight and Word Warden and shit all the time. Because it's just annoying to cast those three abilities constantly. Um... Strength is really good, because damage multiplier on final verse uh, for tragedy. Our Dante's Owl's good. Um, they're okay. They make enemies, from what we've tested at least, they take more damage from status effects, and they have a higher status chance on them, so that's okay. Uh, I don't think they're amazing, but they're definitely not bad. Same with, like, Word Warden. It's not terrible, but it's not amazing either. Um, daily standing limit? Yeah, it'd be like that. Um... I would expect them to probably nerf Dante's overcard cap from 15k at base to 10k at base. 
um, maybe even lower, but I'd say probably 10k. And they'd probably drop Tragedy from a three times multiplier to a two times multiplier. That'd be my guess for how they would nerf him. Honestly, he'd still be insanely good if that happened. I just think he'd probably be not this ridiculous. Um, also, it is extremely cringe that they did not name his alt helm the Virgil helmet, but that's just my opinion. Uh, one just needs to do the rest of the game. Uh, Dante's DE's answer to my pleads to stop introducing new cyclable abilities. <laughs> yeah, you just have to cycle your abilities in a different way now. Um, well, I've been just fucking... Oh, weird thing about this, by the way. So Noctua here, right? You can customize its appearance. It uses tome skins, but funnily enough... Um, he holds them upside down. <laughs> so I'm not sure what's up with that. The funny thing, though, if we wait for him to play his, like, passive animation... Not as all of his ass. I don't think it's that great either, personally. Um, yeah. So if you look, the Noctua he holds in his idle animation uses his colors, not the Noctua colors, which makes sense. I just think it's kind of funny. It's like he has another Noctua he just keeps in his back pocket that's like the decoy Noctua or something. That's the one he gives to the fucking, uh, like goes floating and shit, you know? I guess. Um. I have been yapping for an hour and a half about shit in this update. Yeah. One more thing someone asked was, uh, Ascendant Fusion. So basically, you can now forge three of any given color into a Tau Forge. So like, like that. I'm still of the opinion that three feels like too many. I feel like it should be two. But at the same time, Archon Shards are now a lot more accessible because Netra Cells got changed so that you can't get shit Arcanes from them anymore. Like, this week, I ran them with Nitro just earlier today. I deliberately waited for this update to come out for this. We got three Legendary Melee Arcanes and two Shards. Um, so Shards are going to be a lot more common to get from Netra Cells. So three, I think I'll just take, like, you know, check back with me in a month or two when I've had time to see how the new drop chances affect the number of excess Shards I have. Because once we get into that groove... Um, I feel like it'll be more obvious to me if 3 feels fair. And then, yeah, Dante's is Dark Verse. I don't think this will be great to put on other frames, but all of his other abilities would have been too good or wouldn't work. Where's Etch? Is their curse lifted? I got no melee arcane adapters, and they actually dropped its chance from 20 to 15%. So, we take those, I guess. Ironically, I kind of I would have used one. I mean, you know, fair enough, but... I felt bad, yes. Would I have to use it? Yes. <laughs> Reasonable. God damn it, I could have I use I need this fuck, but it didn't see enough. Yeah. Never heard someone whine that they didn't get a melee arcane adapter. <laughs> that's that's some that's fucked up, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> after what happened, after Ed just completely just blue balled the entire stream with his spell. Is that here? Is that here today? I don't think I just here right now. Gotta, what a band is that, actually gonna... that motherfucker. He ruined my <laughs> goddamn life. Four out of five Archon shards, two weeks in a row, we got an arcane adapter as our last drop, dude. Two weeks in a row. One week I didn't stream, but it happened again the next week. That was some bullshit. Also, the Soma Core tone I use in my Orbiter, just passively, is Arcwing. It's just a very nice neutral track. Hell yeah. I have several new ones to unlock now. Because, uh, yeah, Granum Void got a few. And then, uh... The Sanctum has a lot of them now. Amogus Trip. Anyways. GI Lighting has done this room and interesting we'll put it that way um meme with red liner this is the yeah this is the cool kid music for my orbiter i think that's honestly a fair assessment two legendary and the two adapters i don't know if i call getting two adapters lucky personally but you know fair enough um especially with the fact that deep archimedia okay so Import okay, PSA for all of you. Deep Archimedia, the new game mode that lets you get more rewards but costs two Netra cells um, to play, is coming out next week. DE said in their post about this, they will give everyone all of their Netra cell charges back when this comes out so they can do it. 
So do your Netra cells as soon as possible next week, because you're going to get them all back for free partway through the week to play the new content. So we'll be able to do them all twice in that week. Um, so just be aware of that. Yeah, next week, I just recommend do your Netra cells as fast as possible because you're going to get all your charges back. Imagine if you get a credit cash from Netra Cells. Every time I got a melee fortification, I would have fucking preferred a credit cash at that point. Honestly. Anyways. Is there a way to do a finish instead of like a mercy kill if they're low enough? Um, I think that's possible, but I'm not entirely sure if it requires like some finagling. I thought the mana would have five of ten charges. I don't know for sure, but based on the wording, I don't think so. Um... It might be that way, but personally, I'm not risking it. Um, but I guess we'll just have to see. But even so, that's still my recommendation as a just-in-case. Um, if it is just five bonus charges, that's nice. But considering that the intent of the charges is to make sure you can play Netra Cells, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a refresh of your existing charges. You already have five. You don't need the extra five, if that makes sense. Um, but... I guess we'll have to see. That's just a C thing. I'd still recommend doing them early as a just-in-case, though. Uh, just to avoid the potential future where you get a refresh and not five extras on top of what you already have. Is Anaros finally useful now? Yes. Um, I would say Anaros is like a comfortably high B, low A tier frame right now, in my opinion. Um, he's not Hydroid levels of good. I guess I'd probably put him in, if I was to tier him, I'd put him in like a B tier then, because I'd probably put Hydroid in A, um, maybe even higher than that, honestly. But I saw like a 35k health in Aros earlier today. That's based. Um, two charges per play. I think, and I don't know for sure about this, I think it costs two charges to do it. But once you spend those charges to lock yourself into it, you can keep running it as many times as you want to work through the reward track. I don't think we've gotten official word on this. But how I believe it works is basically you have to earn a certain number of research points to work your way through the track. I don't know. Here, I'll face the camera for you all so while I'm talking about this. Just, you know, more personable, right? Make eye contact with whatever the fuck that is. Mm -hmm. um, so my understanding is you have to get research points, right? So instead of punishing the player for not making it as hard as possible to do it all in one go and losing other Netra Cell charges... I think how it works is you lock your, you spend those two to play the mission type, and then the punishment for not taking all the debuffs is you have to play it multiple times. But regardless of that fact, um, like even so, you have to play it multiple times. It doesn't consume more than those two charges, as far as I'm aware. It's just that you're going to basically, if you're not going to deliberately make it harder for yourself, you're going to have to spend more time doing it. I believe that's how that works. Um... I believe that's how that works. I keep losing my fucking voice when I say that word. I believe that's how that works. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, that's just my understanding of it right now. Maybe it won't be like that. That would fucking suck. Um, personally, I'm probably going to try to primarily play it as hard as possible just for the fun of it. But I feel like in the current state of the game with... Inaros' rework, and then all these new augments. I think, like, genuinely, Loki is a much better character now. Chroma is a much better character now. Um, like, I think a lot of characters got considerable buffs from the augments that were added, as well as from, you know, like, Inaros' rework, for example. So, I feel like, especially with the upcoming introduction of Deep Archimedia, I don't think there's any frame in the game that can't do it. Just conceptually. Maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll push the game too far and find out um, the truth of that when the game mode comes out. But the, uh, my thought process, I guess, is my initial rationale. Like, people ask me all the time, way back before, like, like, like back when Duviri came out, for example, because it was like the roguelike mechanic. You're like, well, what are... Like, you know, what if you get a frame that's bad? I'm like, well, I don't think there are any frames that are, like, so bad you can't use them. But at the time, my exceptions were Hydroid and Inaros. Um, and I felt like they just had nothing going for them, really. So, now that they've both been reworked into generally good spots, I don't think there's anyone who I would just straight up say can't... or doesn't have anything going for them. I guess let me put it that way. Because Hydroid's problem was his kit 
felt like it was actively working against itself half the fucking time, and it was just really weak. It just didn't do much. Um, Inaros' issue was that most of his abilities were not that helpful, and his gimmick of, you know, trying to be this strong tank character didn't even work because shield gating doesn't apply to him. So, I feel like now every character has something that they can leverage in higher level content. Also, I disagree that Caliban is bad. Is he mediocre? Yes. But he still has a really good armor strip, and uh, his 3 is actually pretty decent. I would also argue his his passive is okay. I wish it stacked with adaptation, but it's whatever. Um, unfitting? I think that's fair, yeah. Like, there are, so I certainly play favorites. Like, Exalted Weapon Frames, immediate insta-take, because I don't have to worry about wh what weapons I get if I pick an Exalted Weapon Frame. I can just rely on their Exalted and stuff like that. But, um... I don't think Caliban is bad, I just think he's mediocre as fuck. That's my issue with him, and I do hope that when his rework happens, um, he's in a better spot afterwards. Next in Equinox, they're still very much usable at the Brain Rod, the majority of the community will still whine about them. Um, I do think, like, Loki is not getting a rework. Pablo's pretty much said these buffs are about as good as it gets, and that's whatever to me, I guess, because I understand the idea of not wanting to infringe on Loki's identity by giving him damage potential. Yeah. I feel like there are more creative ways to buff a character than that, but at the same time, I see the rationale. Yeah. Um, and I think he's okay now with Decoy's Augment and the, the speed boost, helping his two worst abilities. Radial Disarm's not amazing, but that's besides the point. Caliban is just mediocre. I think his one and his two deserve buffs, um, and I think his three just needs like some quality of life changes. Um, Nyx... Remove the cap on her fucking armor strip. Unironically, that's it. Her passive could be changed. And her four is not amazing without the augment. But, like, just fucking... Just fucking remove the cap on her, too. Um, that would make her way better. It would not be overpowered, considering how many armor strips there are in the game. Like, I could literally just put Theros Strike on her. Like, back and in like, the fucking day when that was first added, like, I was like, holy shit, like, an easy to access 100% instant. Yeah, like, when, Nick's, when that like, was first damn. new, yeah... It, it was good, I agree. But now that it cancels itself when you recast it, it's not six enemies, nine with the augment, and it, yeah, it does also have a duration. You should be able to mash that shit and strip an entire room through walls. That's not overpowered, in my opinion. Um, genuinely, that's all. Like Nyx would go up a tier if she got that buff, unironically. Hell yeah. Um, Equinox. I don't know enough about her to have a great take on this. Equinox day form, I think, has strength, but is boring. Equinox night form absolutely needs help, in my opinion. Um, she is one of the worst supports in the game, if you ask me. Oh? Um, her damage reduction has fall off at the edge of its range. Her two is good, I guess. Um, the shield return on her four is like 15 per kill, which is oh, really Jesus. bad. <laughs> um... I feel like she could use some help. Another suggestion I would like to make in regards to Equinox, whenever you switch forms, the buff from switching forms should just be a passive in that form instead of being tied to a duration. I think that'd make her a lot better too. Um, for her night form, remove the like remove the fall off at the edge of the range for pacify, and make it so that um, her four gives you more shields per kill. Like I don't know, bump up, bump up like sixty. That'd be good because it scales with strength. Um, Trinity could also need some help. Trinity is still a good character, she's just really boring. So I do agree that she could use some stuff, but I don't think she's, like, in any dire need. I just think she's boring as shit to play. She's still good. Um, the meta has just kind of left her behind. She used to be one of the best frames in the game, because no support could, you know... Like, we didn't have as many ways to access energy and stuff like that. Um... Way nowadays, back in though, the day, it's yeah. kind of outpaced. Yeah, like back in the days of like Void Tower, like Void Keys and stuff, you'd always have a train. Hell yeah. Nowadays, she's still good, but she's not, uh, nothing special. Um, but yeah, I feel like the, the point I was trying to make that I got really sidetracked about was I feel like in concept. I don't think there's any frame that can't do Deep Archimedia. Like, I don't think there's any frame where if you get them in your lineup, you're fucked, and you just can't do it. <laughs> now, there is one thing that throws a wrench into that, and that's, well, two. Disruption and Mirror Defense. Um... I'm worried those will fuck people over constantly. Also, I agree with you, Blueprint, that Day and Nightform basically have no synergy with each other. Um, if there was a benefit for switching between the two... 
That'd be cool, other than just the temporary buff that doesn't keep any of your, like... If they made it so that her 3 and her 4 basically kept their charge when you switched, so, like, the amount of power... Like, so, for example, with Pacify and Provoke, that augment, um, it should keep the amount of slow or power strength like you have between the two. So if I switch from day form to night form, my slow should not reset... Uh, in my opinion. And then the augment that keeps her four charge, fucking remove that shit, make it part of her kit. Unironically, it's stupid that it works that way. Because you could have this cool parody there, right? Where you're in night form to, like, keep yourself alive with shields, and then you switch for the nuke and then switch back. No, you can't do that without a fucking augment. And you can't really do that at all anyways, because night form sucks. Um, <laughs> They did say at PAX that aside from Caliban, there is one other frame that is currently under scope for a rework. They did not say who. Plenty of ideas for who it could be. It's not nearly as obvious as it used to be with Hydroid and Anaros, because everyone knew that shit was coming. So, um, hopefully it's Equinox. Honestly, if I had to pick one character for, like, a full-fledged rework, it would be Equinox, I think. Um, other characters I want to get buffs. Um, she's the tier for me. I think Banshee, I would probably put her as a B tier, maybe a C tier frame. Here's the weird thing about Banshee. She's super hard-stuck glass cannon kind of character. Um, Silence is actually a really good ability for, like, disabling special abilities, and I genuinely think Sonar is one of the most broken damage amps in the entire game. Her one oh, is yeah. okay. It should only be upper body. It shouldn't be a full body action. And her ult sucks ass. Um, Sonic Quake is really bad. Holy shit, it's the worst thing in the world. I'm not this one. It is, it is awful. <laughs> I guess one twenty blast every second. Probably the most likely ones. Um, I think Chroma, with his augment, while not amazing and definitely he still needs help, I think he is. I think he can He's stand so on his one leg augment. for now. <laughs> um, they removed Realizer from the inventory screen. I think that got moved to a new section. I think if you're looking at it, is it under Fire Rate? There's, yeah, Magazine. Reload time, ammo maximum, and ammo from pickups are now sub stats of Magazine. Just to condense it a bit. That actually takes some degree of skill because she dies in two hits. Yeah, I just use Pillage on mine. A lot of people like Gloom on her too, but I just use Pillage. Um, But yeah, Banshee's an alright frame. She's just super paper thin. She will just die to anything. That's the main drawback of her. Um, She'll just die to anything. The worst ability in the game at this point. I feel like if I had to pick a single worst ability, Soundquake does make a very strong argument for that ability. It is complete dog shit. It is actually comedically bad. I I think it was actually you, Nitro, that suggested at one point doing a making Soundquake overpowered. And I was just like, no, you can't. I'm just putting my <laughs> yeah, foot down on this one. Yeah, you no, can't. I don't. I don't think you could, honestly. <laughs> like what like level thirty do? unarmored enemies don't take shit from that ability. What do you want from me? How would you even fix that? How would you fucking go? About Valkyrie trying? paralysis. Valkyrie paralysis at least stuns enemies and doesn't. It's not good either. Um, but I think the, I think Soundquake is worse. Under four repeated images. I think for this, the rationale was that you would only see the most important stats, and then you could hover to see substats of them, um, for context, but this is like at a glance, you're not overwhelmed. I think that was the idea, was for, especially for new players, they don't want them to be overwhelmed. It's like, here's the stats, you can hover over them to see the sub stuff. Like, yeah, like... Uh, shield, and then you can see under the shield section, recharge, recharge delay, and shield gate, um, armor, and then that shows that the damage reduction, um, and then energy, which is start missions with so much energy, and the rate at which you recover energy. Without having it use the augment, the fact that it has natural armor without strength scaling is BS. I actually, I'm gonna be honest with you, Blue, I think that's a bug. After they changed her aug or after the augment changes came out, um, it just started doing that out of nowhere. And I think nobody plays Banshee, so it's never actually been reported. Because <laughs> if you look, if I'm, if memory serves for Banshee, it's not mentioned anywhere that it strips. I don't even think it's in her ability tips. Let me look. Yeah, Sonic Fracture is an augment mod that temporarily reduces enemy armor. Um, It's not in here.
I don't I don't think it's supposed to armor strip. I think they fucked up and accidentally gave it the base amount of the augment. Around. <laughs> so that sucks. Um <laughs> I don't know if it'll get fixed. It probably will eventually, but who knows. Um without the augment. Yeah, because if you look Sonic Fractures base uh or no, right, it wouldn't be the base amount because this is 70%. It's still really weird to me, though. Because, yeah, it is three casts. That wasn't weird and obscure stuff. I think it was 10, 11. It's in, it was in one of them. Um, but the uh, I don't know if it's intentional, I guess. Why do I have... I don't think that needs to be there. Um, <laughs> we'll just call that a day. Um, anyways, <laughs> this is another character. I don't know if anyone saw this clip. Um, when Veilbreaker first came out. Someone asked Rebecca on the live stream she was doing to talk about the patch notes if Nyx would be buff. To which Reb replied, Nyx doesn't need a buff. She's already very good. And I'll be 100 with you all. That is the most fucking copium take I've ever heard about oh, this right. game. Like, let fuck? alone from the creative director of the game. Uh, That's bad. So I feel like when it comes to Nyx, well, A, clouded judgment because Nyx is Rebecca's favorite Warframe. But on top of that, they always talk about her like you always have this on. Nyx can be played without Assimilate, and on top of that, it's basically her only actually good ability. Mind Control <laughs> has some funny stuff tied to it. Chaos is not nearly as good as it used to be because Crowd Control isn't that important anymore. And Psychic Bolts has a fucking cap of six enemies. <laughs> Unironically, remove this cap. Remove the cap, remove the debuff duration even. It would become way better. Passive sucks. I I can live with it if they never buff it. Um, Protea is Reb's favorite. If that's that, if that's now changed, and maybe for the love of God, we are going to get some changes to to Nyx. Like, let me put it this way. In regards to my take that I currently don't think anyone is going to. Uh, be unable to do the new content. I do think there are like frames that will su suffer less than others. Let me put it that way. Because there are still frames that need help. Like, I love Frost. I simp for Frost all the time. His one and his two kind of suck. And his passive is dog shit. Um, his two is good with the augment. But sucks otherwise. Uh, also, yeah. Summary, Dante broken and Aros no longer trash here. Effectively. Like, my thing is... Previously, I think Hydroid and Anaros genuinely had nothing going for them. Other characters do have stuff going for them, but they can still be very restrictive, like Loki or Frost or, you know, like a Valkyr or a Nyx or a Banshee or something. Um, these characters aren't necessarily, like, top tier, but they do have things they can do, and I think that's important to consider, versus, like, in Aros, what were you gonna do, put on Gloom and still get one shot? Like, <laughs> fucking congrats. Um, Congratulations. The same amount of armor strip. Wow. Um, oh, level zero version of the augment. That might be what I was thinking of. Fair, because that's 35%, right? That was what I was thinking of in my head, was that number. Um, I can smack my mic. There's a lot of frames that I don't think need full reworks. Um, later, we're live right now. Anyways. Um, you guys remember when Zephyr got a rework? So, what happened with that was that update was... Like, five or six frames got buffs. Zephyr got the biggest ones. She got a full rework. And then, also, yes, the Cool Kid Echo comes from Nitro occasionally. I've just learned to screen it out at this point. Um... You would hear when he has pushed to talk off. Um, it's just basically me listening. It's, I'm just talking to myself secretly the entire time. <laughs> uh, opinion is on Oberon. I think he's underrated. Um, is he amazing? No. Is he bad? No. And the amount of people that think that he's bad is stupid. 
Um, I use, I've used Oberon for almost every single Archon hunt since they came out, and I don't struggle with him that much. If I ever died with Oberon as my frames, because I was being stupid. Um, I am an Oberon defender. I will defend Oberon's honor. This character is good. Is he amazing? No, but he's good. Um, anyways, uh, fuck, the point I was trying to make, which has kind of escaped me because I got distracted simping for Oberon, basically... <laughs> I feel like um, there are frames that have enough stuff to work with that they can survive at higher levels and function now. Um, the question will be how big of a deal are the debuffs and stuff like that. Um, I don't see a world where every frame is going to be viable and effective. I think we are in a world currently where every frame is viable, but I say viable with kind of air quotes because it like right tool for the job kind of thing, right? Like. Yeah, Loki excels at spy way more than he does at fucking defense, but that doesn't mean he's a bad frame all around because he's not good at defense, you know what I mean? Um, and so you got to take that kind of stuff into consideration. Like, yeah, is Octavia particularly good, ex particularly good at exterminate? No, she's very stationary. Do I still think she's the best character in the game in terms of how powerful she is? Yes, because she's insanely powerful. Just because they don't excel at every single thing doesn't mean they're bad. That's part of why Wukong has been so popular for so long. He's good at everything. Is he amazing? Is he the best at everything? No, but he's still good at everything. So it doesn't matter. You can just use him for everything. With defense, with the decoy rework? Possibly. Um, Right, that was what I was talking about. The update that added all of those things to frames. So Zephyr got a rework. That was when Atlas got his rubble passive. Um, Like a bunch of frames got either touch-ups and then Zephyr got a full-on rework. I want another one of those. I want another update where one frame is like a centerpiece rework, and then like four other frames get sizable buffs or changes to their abilities that make them more worth using. If we just got another update that was just focusing on fixing like the bottom five characters in the game, that would fucking rock. Hell yeah. Because that update with Zephyr was fantastic. Then again, the fact that petrifying your rock wall doesn't give it more health still pisses me off a lot. But regardless of that fact... Um, all of those frames got way better after that update, even if Atlas, his four and his two still kind of suck. Um, a lot of those frames got way better. So I would love to see, uh, just like not even full on reworks for some of them, but just changes to make them better. Um, I think they'd make it a lot better. We got power corrupt so much that Rubble Heap is not needed anymore. Um, I personally still use Rubble Heap and a lot of that is the comfort of the increased range because as far as i'm aware there's no way to increase the target acquisition range of his one other than rubble heap and on top of that it costs no energy when you're at that point and i'm gonna be at full rubble anyway so i still personally use it but i can see your point because like with ceramic dagger you can one-shot acolytes like you don't you don't need the extra damage from rubble heap or at least support no one does support or cc because every anime that matures is a, uh, matters is immune to it this is part of why I talked about this on a previous stream. Um, I think defense should be changed from a wave-based to a time-based game mode. Do I think this will happen? No. But my argument basically goes like this. It would make the reward rotations consistent, which would make it feel much like le like much less of a detriment if you got it in like an arbitration rotation or something. But more importantly, if your goal was not to kill enemies, but to outlast them, crowd control would become way more relevant in one of the most common game modes in the entire game. Because, um, if you're playing content like that, the... You can still just crowd control, like, in that context, you could crowd control the trash mobs and focus on what resists you. And that would be more effective, because you don't have to actually kill stuff to progress. I've always thought it's weird that in defense you have to kill stuff to progress. So, um, stop the ones that will hurt. And yeah, that's kind of part of it, is, like, if it was changed to a time-based game mode, I feel like you'll be more capable of using crowd control because like crowd control can still be used in stuff like mirror defense and whatnot even though like in the labs with the existence of like the anatomizer and the hollow vein and especially um the what we call you know the dorito right the triangles um it's not nearly as good just because overguard's fucking everywhere but i feel like things like mirror defense and um also, yeah, you don't have to waste time picking off stragglers. Like, here's the thing. I think the main argument against that con conceptually would be, well, if it's 
enemy kills based, I can technically get through my defense rotations faster than five minutes. The thing is, past like wave 15, no you're fucking not. Um, for most people, it, that will not be after wave 5. You have to have such a high kill efficiency to maintain that, and you'll eventually lose it. So, I think, um, but it will automatically go to the next wave after a certain number of enemies are killed. That's fair, but I, this is my personal opinion. I think to make crowd control more relevant, they should just completely remove the killing enemies requirement for progression. Also, you get the new simulacrum by playing um, Disruption. There's a currency you get from that. You talk to Lloyd. He has a shop called Research Dante. It's in there. Um, so that's how you get the new simulacrum. Um, also, most people aren't going past Wave 20. That's true, but at the same time, you have things like Defense Fissures and Defense Arbitrations that most people just ignore. Because they just suck. Would that affect Hydron as the leveling mission if events was time-based? I would actually think it would make it better, unironically. Because enemies would still be spawning infinitely during that time, right? So, even if it's time-based, enemies will still be spawning infinitely. So you can still just, you know, keep killing them. Hell, I think it might be above because there would be less downtime between waves. Um... If you were doing a no weapons challenge, would you allow Necromec melee? Why? <laughs> I guess if I had no choice. Zero downtime for, uh, for combo in Saren. Yeah, I. this is just, and I don't think this will ever happen. I would love if it did, because I genuinely do think no more waves, make it a time-based game mode. I think they make defense way more fun. I think that would open up... Um, open up a lot new a lot more new opportunities for like a different meta to form around defense and it would make it feel a lot more fair and a lot less like a slog because it'd be like survival at that point um if you don't get rid of the overguard yeah and there is i still think there is a genuine argument to be made that if an eximus unit is hit by a cc ability their overguard should take more damage um i feel like i don't know in the way it's currently set up i don't think overguard is like so detrimental that you can't do anything about it outside of some particular contexts. Like, everything in Duviri optional undercroft portals on Steel Path is ridiculous, especially the defense modes. Literally 80% of the enemies are fucking Eximus units. But, <laughs> yeah. If they made it to, like, every CC ability that hit an enemy made them take more damage, um, that'd be really cool. Like, you know, say I'm having a, like, I'm playing a character, like, I don't know, Loki. He has over... The Eximus has overguard. Hit him with radial disarm. Now his overguard takes double damage. So my ability wasn't completely wasted on him, right? Um, you could even maybe make it so it, like frames with multiple CC abilities can keep stacking that buff, potentially. Um, while vulnerable to CC. I think that being immune to damage outright is just a frustrating mechanic. I don't agree with that conceptually, personally. Um, I feel like the solution isn't to force you to use crowd control. It's to make crowd control a more enticing option. Um, because, like, I, here's a particular example of this. Nitro will know what I'm talking about because this has killed us multiple times. Project Zomboid. So, there is a mod for Project Zomboid that adds zombie variants from the game uh, Cataclysm. Dark Days had really good... One of those zombie variants is the Sheriff Zombie. Yeah. Sheriff Zombies are immune to bullets. That is the <laughs> most unfun mechanic I have ever heard of in my life. Plus, plus... They almost always spawn as runners. Yeah, they will always spawn as sprinters. They will run through a group, immune to bullets, and grab you. Um, I think that mechanics that make you unable to deal damage a certain way or at all aren't fun. Because you're forcing the player to use CC. And guess what? If I don't have any crowd control, what do I do? Like, if the argument is only damage abilities, that's still going to massively neuter some characters in certain contexts. So, I don't personally think damage should be touched. It will still be the meta even if crowd control gets buffed. I just think crowd control should be a more enticing option. Because in the current state of the game, it's really not worth using the vast majority of the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, Just because you can just kill stuff and a lot of stuff is immune to it. Also, that does sound aggravating. Yeah, because it is. Because I died to it multiple times before I found I the config so I had to turn them off. Yeah, we have... Nitro, I think, has several clips of us being mauled by those fucking things. Sheriff zombies are cancer. <laughs> uh, I don't want to make CCOP or better damage. I just want to make it an option. Yeah, I think my personal opinion on that 
Main thing, make it so that enemies that get hit by CC abilities take progressively more damage to Overguard. I think that would help it out a ton. Um, I also do feel like, like I said, if you change defense to a time-based game mode, it would also passively buff CC just by making it more appealing. Um, you have multiplier weapons, keep a two times heavy attack, melee in your back pocket. I still feel like that's... How do I put this? Dictating player behavior in a way that's still not that fun? Because I feel like a big part of what makes people frustrated with Eximus units is they force you to play a certain way. And that's the same problem in the other direction, is the enemy still forces you to play a certain way that's kind of unfun. Um, because you, like, have to have an option prepared for them. Then again, some enemies do work like this already, like Demolishers. So if they were exclusive to a specific game mode, maybe it wouldn't be as big of a deal. Um... Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's um, uh, really big, honestly. Yeah, listen, my personal suggestion, make defense a time-based game mode, make uh, Eximus or any Overguard unit really take more damage on their Overguard when they've been hit by a CC ability. That would be my two main changes to it, and I think it would honestly make crowd control a lot more appealing. Um, your damage cannot work alone, like how Trib showed DEMA uh, made the opposite of that. Yeah, and that's fair. I actually haven't seen Trib's video on the subject. I didn't realize he even released it. I might watch that and sort of mull that over uh, conceptually because i can see the rationale behind overguard of like this is a big threat you shouldn't be able to just you know turn it off you actually have to contend with the special mechanics of that enemy that was what they explained with uh eximus during the eximus rework was when they were playtesting it especially in a full group they were never noticing the eximus changes because they just kept getting crowd controlled off the face of the planet and they were never actually doing anything so um I can see the rationale that the devs had, I guess. Um, should have diminished returns like Acolytes. That could also be a potential solution, is you basically can't CC them forever. Like, you can hit them with it, but they'll break out of it eventually. I could see that being a potential solution, too. Yeah. Um, is how long is a wave? I would say five minutes, because, I mean, rotations and survival are five minutes. And I feel like... Uh, and I don't think it should be wave-based. It'd just be five minutes, and then enemies will infinitely spawn during that period. Um, also, Atlas, I am noticing you. Uh, I'm just trying to <laughs> read through the chat as effectively as I can. Um, yeah, I guess that's just my thoughts on this. I'll probably watch Trib's video eventually. I don't watch much Warframe content, to be honest. I play this game enough. I, I don't really need to, to have my opinions told to me. I guess we'll put it that way. But it's definitely something to, to think about. Do I think CC is going to be changed much? Not really. But if Trib was able to successfully bully Pablo into making a buff to Loki, but fuck, maybe it'll work. Hell yeah. Also, so no waves, yes. I think it should just be five minutes per rotation. Enemies spawn infinitely during that time. And every five minutes, um, like, enemy intensity increases, kind of like how it does currently with, like, more special units and stuff later on in defense. Um... Sounds like an amazing farming spot. I also do think that you'd have to consider, like, over time, the amount of enemy spawns would increase the longer you go. Like, at first, it wouldn't be super intense, but later on it would be, like the current amount, or like like current defense, basically. All I'm really proposing is they just switch it to a time-based game mode. Um, that's effectively it. Um, notice Hans cool kid? I mean, the Hans has been right here the entire time. I... Also, people are talking about... Uh, having sex with Oberon. Not an entirely shit opinion, but I don't know why they feel yeah. need to express <laughs> that here. Um, yeah, this fucking hell. I've been streaming for two hours, and I've basically just been talking about nothing this entire time. I mean, it's um, cute to, like, you know... Mob density hell on SP. It could be. I feel like you'd have to temper it. Like, you would have to keep that in mind. Here's the thing, though. Steel Path Defense already is mob hell, in my opinion. Because I'm not saying you spawn all the enemies at once. Um, it would still be kind of like waves in terms of like you would sp you would have a cap on the amount of enemies that could be alive at a given time, right? Like how it works currently. So I can definitely see the concern though, especially with like if you're solo because you know it uses full squad spawns. Um, quickly find cheese traps like how we can cheese interception. I feel like you wouldn't like that. Um, but that's probably the case too, yeah. But I don't know. My main thing with defense is making it so you're supposed to defend the objective, but you progress by killing shit is just lame and counterintuitive. I feel like how the game, po game mode should conceptually play out. My goal is not to defend the, tur the console so much as kill everything as fast as possible because I want my fucking reward. 
hey, Kitty, uh, I have participants in the, in the uh, Simulator Conference as well, and uh, fun fact, the uh, Chroma Augments uh, are base duration, if you keep killing fast enough. Oh, you can like, seed your base duration? That's yes. nice. I guess oh, you yeah. probably have to do that with, like, uh... Oh, what the fuck is it called? Like, AoE attacks and shit. Oh, not necessarily. What's it? I've been doing it um, with the boss because it's, it's one second per kill. Yeah, I got. I feel like it brought, I guess I should clarify. It'd be easiest to do with, oh, yeah, with easiest, AoE yeah. attacks. Um... What if defense was called... Oh, they patched... Did they patch that exceeding the cap? Base duration is now the cap? Well, damn. Okay, didn't realize that was a bug. Um... Used to have no cap, and now it's capped on your current duration? Okay, that makes more sense. I wasn't ah, sure if it was like, a uh, Rotor Swell, where it could exceed your duration, but not by that much. It's like double or something. Oh, what the fucking thing I'm talking um, about? Yeah, they're saying that got fixed in the hotfix. Uh -huh. Apparently, that was a bug. Uh -huh. Weird, because I'm still able to do it. Then again, I haven't, up I haven't updated it yet, so I don't know. Do you have uh If you have any conditionals that affect duration, that could be causing it too. I don't. I don't well, know oh, maybe multi efficiency. That might be it. Yeah, that's probably uh -huh. it. Ah, uh, I'm stupid, Lamar. Um. Also, I'm not reading that message, Keegan. I'm sorry. You'll have to super chat me to for me to read that message. That's my, that's my new rule. If you want me to read some fuck shit, it has to be a donation. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not reading it. <laughs> no pun intended. I mean... No, nah, I'm not even going to play into this joke. I don't get thirsting for most Warframes. Um, mm -hmm. But... Oh, wait. Check what you... I Fuck, I didn't see that. Sorry. What is this? H. Nyx Prime. Prime. What the f- What the fuck is this? Radial Blind? Oh, wait, what? Your stream froze, what's up? No, um... My stream's not frozen, I'm just looking at something, sorry. N this is a Nyx build with Radial Blind. I mean, I was, I was gonna do that because, you know... Femic Scalibur, obviously. Did so. you rename your melee weapon Exalted Prime Blade? <laughs> Based on I honestly. respect the commitment to the bit. I'm not gonna lie. Honestly, fuck yeah. <laughs> you mean Excalibur? <laughs> yeah. <Really? laughs> so, yes, Blueprint stops by sometimes. Um, we have we, have we told them about the fucking. We are not telling Blueprint the thing I almost sent him as a gift. That's not happening. That was that would have been so fucking embarrassing if I actually sent that on accident. Um, I did show that screenshot on stream one time, but I don't think Blueprint was there. Um, anyways, any mode is basically on any. Okay, funny, funnily enough, Zerd, um. I did a similar gimmick in my most recent video, right? Joke about how every game mode is secretly exterminate. But the, the the original one was, yeah, everything was capture. And honestly, that was fucking hilarious. It's just like, exterminate is just capture, but you capture a hundred people and <laughs> shit like that. Um, that shit was funny. It's Tyanax <laughs> Deluxe, though. Not personally a huge fan, with or without the nipples, frankly. But that's just a me thing. Um, they added Naked Lloyd. What the fuck are you talking about? App start to ban you. <laughs> Anyways. I am the one who commissioned the Avara VR chat model? That's interesting. Huh. Um, speaking of the April Fool's video, minor spoiler for you all, um, Blueprint is making an appearance in it. I am not the only person appearing in my own April Fool's project. Um, you'll see quite a few people in there. The only one most of you will probably recognize is Blueprint. Um... But you'll get you'll get a little bit of him in that. Um For a few days last Yeah. Link made the website for it, remember? Link made the little generator where it would just randomly generate like missions where it was like blank is just blank with blank elements. And he made this little generator for it, because he was like the meme was getting so stale he, he automated the process. <laughs> um Give my boy some love. Honestly, Styanax gets a shit ton of special treatment because he's the 50. Like, that's... Unironically, I think that's the case. Like, he got his <laughs> deluxe already. He's got a deluxe before, like... Fucking hell, dude. Um, Caliban and Urelli released before him and don't have deluxes. Lavos doesn't have a deluxe. Um, Gyre doesn't have a deluxe. Styanax is just getting a ton of special treatment because he's the 50th, I think. G genuinely. He's popular, he's good, and he's number 50. 
Frank Sabucci set him on fire? I mean, I probably could. Link is a real one? Yeah, deadass. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> um, Next in CM build I sent to the entire stream. Uh, I mean, I guess I could, but I don't know if I want to. This stuff is just not good. I think that depends. Liger designed the proto frames, Arthur and Owie, and they look really cool. I don't like most of his deluxes, though. Um, they're... I don't know. There's something about them that just doesn't feel Warframe enough to me. I like playing into the science fiction element of things. I'm sorry, you guys are just staring at fucking nothing. Hold on. Where's that dancing pug gif I used in the iceberg? Hold on. Does this have a transparency layer? I have no idea. Why is this a... Yeah, this. This, this thing. You guys can't see this. I'm sorry, but I'm just gonna... I don't want to save this into the fucking shitpost video folder. Um, save this. I don't actually know if I can interpret GIFs in OBS, but we'll try. Oh yeah, I can't- okay, here's what you guys get to look at from now on. To make the stream more interesting, this is in the corner from now on. Um, there- you guys Yo. have some movement while I'm, uh, while I'm talking to keep Hell your Zoomer yeah. brains entertained. Um, so there- actually, let me find this. There is this wonderful thing that someone made. This, yes, this. So, I don't know if DE would ever commission someone for a deluxe skin like this, because normally it's designed, those are designed in house. Oh, is this the one I think And this wouldn't work as a Tenogen skin because it changes the base model. I would cream my jorts if Jire got this skin. Oh, this, this one. Holy this fuck. Gorgeous one. This fucking thing is so fucking gorgeous. God. All I'm saying... Please, please, please. <laughs> please? This looks so fucking cool. God damn. Don't... Not, no, not wood. We're not doing wood or wood not with this, for fuck's sake. I mean... Um, you cannot just show this and say... And stick into it all not before Mirage, I think. Maybe. Um... I'd have to look into that, honestly. I think that was the one with the fishnets, right? That might be. I don't remember if that was a fan concept. That sounds or not. Like, it, like it's a thing, you know? Um, I oh, like God, here we go. The de yep, yeah, here. It <laughs> I like the design about this is that it's very, like, 1920s, like, flapper aesthetic with, like, the hat and, like, the long, like... This is just fucking cool. Especially because, like, Jire has the sort of, like, skirt motif with the rotor swell and stuff. This plays into that in a really interesting way. Um... I think this would be a fucking awesome skin. Especially because, to be honest, I don't fucking trust G DE with Jire right now. Um, her new skin is alright, the Tenogen one she got. But I'm personally not a huge fan of the Kuva line, because I just don't really like playing into that theme. So I'm kind of just left high and dry right now. <laughs> I don't dislike my Jire fashion, necessarily, but I'd really uh, like a skin like... for her. Because I like the way she plays, but like, god, she looks so fucking stupid. It's funny because Especially entire... with the skirt up, like, god damn, it, it, it really hurts. Yeah, the, this entire thing is just a meme because I wanted to give her the color palette of Valora from Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> um, and it just kind of worked. Not wood, will. I, good, good luck. luck. Um, I, I'm fucking this skin. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I get the feeling I'm willing to wait a while longer. There, like, I've liked, like, Sevagoths was cool conceptually, but... Oh, um, so you gorgeous. know, they probably like, I agree. destroy it, you know? Like, the, here's the thing, I guess, with this. The Kubeil skin is really cool. Like, this is a really cool skin. Um, hell, the body component of it I could probably see myself using. The thing is, I just don't really like the Kuva theme that yeah. much. This is a really neat skin, especially with, like, the, the triplet, like, face on here and stuff. It's really cool, and it's really well designed. But it's just not the kind of stuff, like, when it comes to wood already did, calm down. Um... Since we got a good deluxe skin, it certainly fucking feels. Let me look at the deluxe I lineup. I just want to change the model, so I have to look at that like an ugly skirt. You know, fair enough. Let me look. Deluxe skins. So recently, I yeah, we got Corpus skins. Be the Steinax yeah. one, which I'm just not a huge fan of. Don't like this one. Caldrius is fantastic. I actually do adore this deluxe skin. I think it looks really cool. I do like Kagura as well, which is a Liger design. I really like this skin too, personally. Ooh, um. Wow. Koga's really old. I'm not really fond of either of Ash's Deluxe these days. Never really liked this one. 
never really liked Apanches either. Chroma Dynasty is kind of neat, I guess. Um, Paraxis is a cool skin, in my opinion. Vermilion is v Vermilion. Um, Antonym, I think, is a cool skin. Proto Armor, I actually like a lot. Not a huge fan of you, not a huge fan of you. Not a huge fan of you, except for the wing things, which is the only reason I bought it. Proto Armor is pretty cool. Garuda Hinsa makes her anorexic. Gauss Kresnik <laughs> also makes him anorexic. Um, I like Grendel Neon a lot. Um, Hera Reliquary is cool. Iron Harry. Rakam is neat, but I just never did anything good with it. Ramses is okay. I like this skin, but it kind of sucks. The Teletubby skin for Korra. Not a fan. Limina is cool, but I probably wouldn't personally use it. Nave is okay. Numa is, I don't know, okay. Persito has really cool looking regulators. Not a huge fan of you. This one's okay. This one's really good. Empyrean, I think, is Neja's best skin because none of him are good. Um, This one's really cool. Not a huge fan of this one. Big fan of this one. Whatever about it. This one's really good. Not a huge fan. Don't like this one at all. Mephisto is classically good. We'll put it that way. Not a big fan. Okay, I guess. Okay. I think this one's cool conceptually, but I just can't make it work. Um, This one's sick. This one's sick. Trinity Strike sucks, and I will not be taking any dissent on this opinion. This one sucks because of SpongeBob Anchor Arms. <laughs> Gersemi is unironically a bang and deluxe skin. And I don't want people shit on it. I think it looks great. Not a huge fan of Citadel. Uh, it's just, it's just okay. basic is why I think, you know. Yeah, Proto's like a not different great. different entirely, you know. Wisp Somnium turns her... First of all, really, really with the ass. Second of all, she looks like the guy from the fucking, you know, uh, the, the meme. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, This one's okay, and I think Harrier is decent, too. When it comes to Deluxe, if I had to pick, like, a favorite Deluxe, yeah, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Ding, 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 this one. <laughs> Um, people are too weak to nipple pierce. I don't think that's the reason. I think it's the task of the also, fact that the Warframes happen to have nipple in the first place. Yes, I did dis Death Watch and Carnivax. I don't like either of them. Nine times out of ten, just better. That's Honestly. kind of the bitch of it, too, is because Tenogen can't change the base models. Like, this skin is gorgeous, but it still baits Sevagoth. They can't change the base model like Deluxes can. It doesn't hurt them too much. Like, they usually got really pretty skins, but for Gyre, I feel like if if I want something that, you know, doesn't make her look like she's got this, uh... You guys seen the movie Robots? She looks like she's a character from Robots. Um, if I want to beat that aesthetic, I can't if that's a Tenno Gen skin. They have to keep the base model. So yeah, the only other options I have is, fingers crossed that her deluxe is good, or if I can't beat that, I have to beat Nitro, which was gonna happen anyway. Hell so. yeah. <laughs> Regardless... Is just mid kid. I mean, you know, fair enough. Um, but no, my deluxe skin opinions are that you can, I don't know, fucking clip that and cancel me or some shit. Uh, <laughs> Hopper bottom looking head ass. Honestly, she's just for me. Like, I I don't really love the Kuva aesthetic just in general, but it is like well made and good skin people who do like that aesthetic. That's how I'll put it. Um, I also do agree that I like the other Titania Deluxe a lot. I personally like Don Ann a little bit better, but they're both great. You have bad tastes? Fair enough. Why is there a deranged dancing pug? It's to keep things moving while I'm talking. Here, we'll, th we'll throw Sevagoth up on the screen now that I've got different drip for him that I didn't have to steal from Blueberry Cat because this skin is awesome. Isn't being a clockwork ballerina part of Jire's theme? Yes, but at the same time, I feel like if we're going to talk about... Um, deluxe skins focusing on part of their theme. Like, they have vague connections a lot of the time in terms of the theme. Like, uh, like Kagura, right? It's still broken up, but it's like a Kintsugi type thing. I don't know with this one, honestly. I don't know what's going on with this one. This one is like Warrior Spirit, which is the thing Cyanax embodies, but instead of, uh, like, Spartan influence... It's, um, you know, like Aztec influence. Yeah, Aztec and Mayan. Um, 
Kresnik, I think, is based on, like, Mercury and, like, depictions of that. I guess Garuda Hinza, I don't know, is based off of being poor and not affording food. Um, <laughs> like, a lot of them have things that tie into the theme. But at the same time, I feel like you could still... Like, I don't think that the one with Jire, the one that I showed, I don't think it deviates from her theme too far, personally. Like, she still has that aesthetic of, like being a dancer, I guess. Because that was a big thing in the Roaring Twenties, too. Because, like, a lot of that skin draws from, like, flapper aesthetic. Um, back when women learned that they could, like, smoke cigarettes and other gay shit. So, um, I feel like it was still fit. Because, like, a lot of the stuff is still, like, tangentially related, right? Like, for example, well, I don't know what part of Mephisto is related to Revenant than just making him b buff, but I'm thinking of a very specific skin. Where is it? We'll just search it. Sevagoth. Does this skin play into Sevagoth's sort of grim reaper kind of aesthetic? No. But it plays into the fact that he was like, uh, you know, the Railjack is a ship. It plays into that terminology and that kind of mythos. So it still fits him thematically, even if it's kind of like tangentially related to his theme. Some are more direct, obviously. Like uh, Hydroids. He's a sea monster. I mean, you know, fair enough. I feel like as well, some of them are also a lot more off like Nova Asuri and stuff like that, where it's like, it's just themed off of some god. Hinsa is Hindi for violence. Well, yeah, I think if looking at this guru, I'd be pretty violent if I looked like this. Let me put it that way, because all I've been eating is fucking grape nuts for the past three months. <laughs> Look at how thin she is. I'm sorry. It just, it bothers me. It bothers me. There's a very insensitive joke I want to make that I shouldn't publicly. Um... <laughs> But even so, helped him beat the femboy allegations, more or less. To be honest, this is going to be a very controversial opinion. I am fully aware of that going in. I think Neja has no skins I really like that much. This I bad. stole from Farious Demon and made some tweaks to, and I think it looks alright. But I really like the sort of like high-tech aesthetic almost. Neja doesn't really have anything like that for me. This skin is as good as it gets in that regard. Um, Yaksha. Like, this one's not great. Chemo, chemotherapy required. <laughs> Yaksha's a decent skin, but none of it really fits the taste I wanted to go for. And hell, I don't even know what the prime accessories look like on it. Maybe that would save it. I have no idea. Um, Because this could work if I tweaked this a bit. This could work. But I, I like the sci-fi aesthetic. And Neja doesn't really do that for me. Um, His base prime... His base prime does do that decently, but I could not find a way to color it that I liked. Like, this is okay, I guess. But at the same time, um, I kind of like the way that this ended up turning out. Maybe one day I'll actually just devolve back and use this model with this color scheme. Because this does look cool, in my opinion. Like, I think this still mostly works. The helmet is weird. Um, also, blueprint. Technically, all the Warframes are children. Anyways, I don't know what I said that even prompted that response. Unless, okay, never <laughs> oh. mind. It wasn't me. It was someone in the chat. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is I want Nezra to want to get a more sci-fi centric Tenogen skin. Thing is, Tenogen takes so fucking long to release these days that at this point, I give up. When was the last time you got Tenogen before this one? Exactly. <laughs> Not Umbra. I guess there's your one exception that I can think of. Umbra is a full-grown man, goddammit. He had a wife and children and all that bullshit. Fortunately, he left that life behind for a life of fishing. Hell yeah. <laughs> all I'm gonna say is that's all that it took. The first time he went to Bass Pro Shop and found out that there was a store where you could buy lures and sunflower seeds at the same time, it was over, and the divorce was next year. <laughs> Nezha is a better Yoreli lore in gameplay? Deadass. So we have batches instead of rounds. Oh, yeah, we have batches where we get two fucking Warframe skins after, like, what, a year of no Tenogen? <laughs> Made from Dax, too. I think... Okay, how do I put this? Dagith, I think, is arguable how much of that is myth versus how much of that is actual lore. If Dagith does exhibit some amount of sentience, then yeah. 
As far as I'm aware from what Ballas explains in the Vitruvians, Warframes were made out of a ton of things. Political prisoners, um, volunteers, you know, kid people that were kidnapped, Dax, like, a lot of people got turned into Warframes. Um, it wasn't, like, a hard-stuck thing of we only use a particular group. I believe in the Vitruvians and the Sacrifice, he explains that they used a lot of different groups of people to create Warframes. Isn't Dante an adult, too? I don't think Dante was necessarily, like, a person. He was still a Tenno. It's super annoying how few of them actually get used. Unironically, yes, I agree. I can connect my headphones. Um, no, I'm actually going to say extreme. I'm going to read... While you have to connect your headphones, Atlas, I'm going to read my debit card details right now. Anyways. Fucking hell, it's like I should not still be streaming. I'm sorry that I'm keeping you up with this, honey. Um, <laughs> That's not a problem. <laughs> so... <laughs> the fat office coworker got kidnapped and turned into a Warframe. Uh, hold on, what if I... I have an idea, I have an idea. You want to know what would spice this up? You want to know what would spice this up? Crack open my folder here. Watch this, watch this. We'll just... We'll just... <laughs> I don't think I can do tracking dynamically in OBS. Just... <laughs> Just put that on there. Look, look. Okay, if you'd hold the fuck still. <laughs> Here, what if I just took like a frame? What if I just took like regular Excalibur and then just no animation set, right? Like this. And then we gave him like a. Oh lord. And then we just, at all times, this is me. This is the face reveal. This is what I look like. Um. <laughs> Well, when will this be a clip? Unironically, I straight up told Rose, like, hey, if I ever get approached to be in the partner program, which will never happen, by the way, but if I did, the, my glyph is going to be front-facing cool kid. Unironically, that's what's going to happen. Um, Veru. <laughs> okay, guys, guys, I... You guys want to see a spoiler for the April Fool's video? You guys want to see us? We'll run a poll right now. We'll run a poll right now. Spoiler. I just want to see a quick, small spoiler for this. A quick, a quick, even Blueprint hasn't seen this, despite working on it. I want to see a quick, tiny spoiler for a video coming out in a couple days. Which reminds me, babe, we need to work on your segment. Right, um, yeah. I guess we can do that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, don't use my clip. Oh, no, I won't Blueprint. This is something that I made. Well, I think we can already predict the way this is going to go. You guys are going to see something horrible, and anyone who gets the reference, I'm sorry. That's all I'm going to say about that. Anyone who gets the reference, I'm sorry. If Phoenix or Zayek is still here, they're probably freaking the fuck out of what they just saw right now. Um, the glyph program and the content creator part are different. Um, and the content creator program are two different things? I honestly don't know for sure um, how that know, works. Oh, cool. I saw that video. <laughs> I don't get it. Look, if you, <laughs> yep, there's Zayek. If you don't get it, I'm I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. Um, Atlas, please stop being horny in the chat. That you know, hold just 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 for my own sanity's sake. Um, you're going to jail for a minute. Anyways, I wasn't watching. Here's Zayek. Here's Zayek. You want to see it again? You want to see it again? You want to see it again? That's all. That's all you get of it. That's all you get of it. Um, was the Orican Empire really that bad? A retrospective? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you all know. I think you all know. Like everyone who gets that, you know what sucks? The mirror of that video is not on YouTube anymore. The mirror of that video was not on YouTube anymore. I think it might actually be lost media. The full unedited, unedited video might be lost media now. It's just like, uh... Because there is this... I've talked about this before. Fuck, should I bring up the fucking Ransona image again? Hold hmm. on. Okay. Guys. I have something to share with you all. Where is this?
Where is this fucking meme? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay. Um. God damn it. Okay. This image still contains the people that were in the meme, so this works. It was a political compass using different rant Sona videos. <laughs> Basically, it contained these four characters. This is the fucking gyre. Wait, where the fuck did that save? Oh god, wait, where did that save to? Hold on, <laughs> fuck. Where did that go? Uh oh. <laughs> bad news, bad news. I don't know where that rant Sona image went. Well, the oh, it just, show it, that just didn't, it just didn't update. Okay, this image. This contains the same people. Okay, so basically, here's what I'm talking about. The original thing with the political compass was it was these people that had different videos. Um. So, I think it was like the problem with forced diversity, the truth about the Christchurch shooting, um, stuff like that. Like, just insane shit. I have been trying to track all of these videos down. I have seen all but one of them. And that one involves... Um... Bring the red arrow. This guy right here. This is, I think he goes by Genesius Wolf. He had a video basically arguing that as a Catholic he could morally consume Yif. Which, for those who don't know, is furry porn. Um, that also, sounds you, hilarious. I Genesis Wolf, actually, but yes. I don't know. But that sounds fucking hilarious. I cannot find this video. I actually think it's lost media. He deleted his entire YouTube presence. Um, so I can't find it. There's one video that contains like a bunch of middle schoolers reacting to it. I cannot bear to listen to those motherfuckers. Um, I'm sorry, if you're under the age of like even, I don't know, fucking 16's pushing it before I want to not listen to you, so listen to you talk. So... When you have, like, these, like, 14-year-olds talking about a furry video, it makes me want to kill yeah. myself even worse. Yeah. So, I want to find the Genesius Wolf video purely on the grounds that it sounds funny, and I want to see what he had to say, but I can't find it anywhere. The other videos are interesting. So... The truth about the Christchurch shooting video was re-uploaded to another platform. It's just typical conspiracy shit. It's not nearly as funny as I hoped. Um, I don't know if I can say the title of Kotharix's video. Come on, we, we, we all know what that one is, guys. Don't worry about that. I think everyone's seen them even involving the Blue Dragon thumbnail with a video talking about what we'll call kid touchers and quote-unquote defending them. Um, that video is actually not what you would expect. It was more Kotharix proposing a thought experiment that is it okay to dislike people who have not enacted on their feelings based on things they can't control but, like, don't act on. Um, still not a great video. And he even straight up says in the video he doesn't believe what he's saying, he's just putting it forward. At that point, I don't know why he made the video, because it just ruined his entire career irreparably. I mean, it also made him, you know, notable, um, but I mean, like, yeah. I mean, that too. Vouch moment? No, I think Vouch would just straight up say, um... That it's, okay. Oh, oh he said God. that before, you know, probably. No, hold on. There's something I want to talk about in regards to Vouch. I'm going to put a pin in that for a second. The last one is the problem with forced diversity by, oh, what's he called? He used to be part of Rags' group. If you guys remember Rags, the, the YouTuber who uses, like, uses Doge with the glasses. Yeah, that guy. Um, his video was basically just arguing that, like, at the time there was a push in media for diversity that was actively harming Basically, his argument was that the new Star Wars movies suck, which is reasonable. Um, at the same time, though, it wasn't a great or bad video to me. It was just kind of like a product of its time. Dishonored Wolf, that's correct. Um, it was just a, a product of its time, honestly. Genesis Wolf, I don't know. The thing I just showed was from a, a YouTuber who went by Achilles Argyle, and his video was unironically called Why We Need Racism. That video was fucking hilarious. I am... Almost positive Argyle was trolling. There is no fucking way that guy was being serious with some of the arguments he made. Um, <laughs> someone is implying... Yeah, and that's fair, too. I think that's... Uh, the main thing was the title of the video, Fucked Kothrix. So most people would see it, be disgusted by it, obviously not click on it because they didn't want to hear that kind of shit, and then repost it to places. So here's the thing about Vouch, and in regards to that, there is this infamous argument from Vouch that just pisses me off because it's so stupidly easy to defeat and he makes it all the time. So, 
they're how do we talk about this without getting fucking banned? Hmm. Good um, question. Vouch has this argument that it is not unethical to purchase what we'll call cheese pizza. And here's his argument yeah. for this. If you purchase a computer, components in the computer are made with exploitative labor. So it's not any different from purchasing anything else that is, you know, contains exploitative labor. Now, the problem with this argument is that you can have a computer that requires or that doesn't need exploitation. There's plenty of companies that are on lists for non-exploitative practices for like mining materials and sourcing them and stuff. Um, for cheese pizza, the abuse is the product. You can't separate the abuse from the product. Yeah. That's the difference. <laughs> and Vouch has repeated this argument multiple times. Yep. And the fact that people take him seriously is horrible. Yeah. So all I'm saying is, um, it's context, please. <laughs> Like, un unironically, at that point, we're Vouch, like, yeah, just just say it. Also, see you, Blueprint, I don't blame you for leaving. Um, <laughs> Vouch is a, a very far, very far left YouTuber, we'll put it that way. At least the kids on the Cobol mines aren't getting salted, I guess. I mean, they probably still are, just not in that way. Um, but the <laughs> context is cheese pizza is bad. Yeah, basically. I don't know why I'm going on this tangent, but it's fucking, it's almost six in the morning and I need to go to bed. That's probably why, but, you know. Um... Vouch is just nuts. Let's just put it that way. Um, can you move your Excalibur holster secondary so it doesn't move as much? Um, I guess I probably could. What you want? Slot path assist on. Take this shit off. Maybe this is. Does this ap appeal to your sensibilities? Um, the hell's wrong with you people? I'm not agreeing with the argument. I'm just bringing it up to point out that it's fucking stupid and insane. Um. The age of consent would be abolished because it's a capitalist concept. That's also true. Um, it was some bullshit about how like the age of consent is a like product of power structures, and because there are no power dynamics under socialism, it would have to be abolished. That's yeah. also insane. Yeah. Okay. Look, I know we're getting very off topic, and Warframe has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. The point I'm trying to make is that um, I fucking hate most major political YouTubers. Anyways. Base. Like, Vouch, I'm pretty sure, is in the top 50 earners on Twitch? That's disgusting. That's horrible. That's all I'm gonna say about that. That's horrible. Um... Why would you want people to know that you think that? Genuinely, yeah, why would you say that? Yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'm just getting going on a rant because I just genuinely hate these people. Um... Thanks. Like, I know that's a strong word. I mean it. People like Vouch and Hassan and, like, fuck, even, like, Keffels and shit. Like, fuck, fuck out of here. Um, or, like, Aiden Ross is another one. Dude, Aiden, Aiden Ross and XQC are so fucking dumb, it's horrifying. Have you guys seen that clip where they're talking about what they call Pangria, which they mean Pangea? <laughs> it's actually so mind-numbingly stupid, it hurts. They're so, they're both so fucking stupid. Oh, my God. Like, all the top fucking, like, 50 people on Twitch are all awful to watch. I don't get why they're popular. I don't doubt there are some exceptions, but, like, what the fuck, dude? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. What's the name of the video? Um, the one with Hassan and Aiden Ross? I saw it on Reddit. I'd have to find it. Um, I, unironically, let me just look up, hold on. Like, unless you're referring to something else. Um, hold on. I'm going to look up Aiden Ross Pangria. I want to see if we can find this clip. Professor Aiden Ross debates XQC. Is this what? Okay. Do you believe in the Big Bang? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I found it. If you just look up Aiden Ross Pangria, I don't want to play it. It actually hurts to listen to that much. I don't want to hear it again. <laughs> um. Gonna make me violate for it over and over. I respect that. Um. We'll go back to the topic. I actually should probably go to bed here soon, but um, mm -hmm. sorry for the brief random rant. I forget that now at, at this point in my channel size, I can't safely rant about stupid shit on streams that are large or that are like really late at night because a decent amount of people are still watching me at this point. So I'm sorry, everyone. Uh, I guess I'll just have to stream a game that isn't Warframe and I'll go down to 20 viewers again and then we can talk <laughs> about funny shit. Hell yeah. Um, Help stop the exploitation. I'm not qualified to even talk about any of this topic. I just think it's funny because the rationale is fucking stupid. 
Um, I don't want to devolve into like philo philosophical arguments or like semantics, like Vouch saying that we can't agree that water is H2O because Spanish, the word for water isn't water. That's an actual argument he made to someone. And then when he got pulled, like called out on that being a semantic game, he then argued that water is different for people because it depends on where they live. If it's from like a river or the ocean or something, uh, genuinely uh, just diversion tactics. Um, cause he doesn't want to yeah. interface with the actual debate. Um, I don't even watch political streamers. I unironically just listen to drama channels when I'm working on stuff. And that's how I hear about most of this. Yeah. Um, you can drop kick a culvert and knock them over. Oh, with the uh, the foot build, hell yeah! You can't drink water from the ocean. All the other streamer was trying to get him to agree to was that water is H two O. That was literally the definition he wanted to agree on. Thoughts on the Little Caesars new crazy puffs? I've, been I've never. Had I haven't one. tried the damn things yet though. Nitro is the resident uh, Little Caesar simp. I've Actually, never. Like, ask Rose. You know. She doesn't work there anymore, I don't think. I mean, the ex-employee, you know, would be better. <laughs> Maybe. Lock how documentaries to pass the time. Yeah, I, I often will, like, throw on, like, a Willie Mac or a Lanza video and just not even give a fuck of who they're talking about. Um, The problem people like Vaush and Hassan and stuff like that is they have actual pull, right? Like, they actually do have an effect on things. There are people that, en masse, watch and agree with them. But that's besides the point. Um, when it comes to pizza places, the only one, I don't get pizza often because, like, as a kid, I assumed seeing it in movies and stuff that getting pizza was affordable. Not really. That shit's expensive. <laughs> so I don't get it that much. Tron Evolution Stream 1, that would be based, actually. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> to disagree with someone I don't like. <laughs> yeah, but if your entire, if your entire career is doing that kind of stuff to people on stream, I don't know. You can drink magma once. Is true only in the context of chemistry. I feel like if you want to agree on the fundamental definition of it, because you can art get into, ultimately. I don't like keeping going back to this topic, but ultimately the tactic that was being used was trying to get Vouch to just agree to something, to just find any, literally any common ground between the two of them, and he wouldn't do it. It was just to see if he would continue to play semantic games, and he did. Did eating the cheese hurt your taste for pizza? No. It was so far removed from actual pizza that it didn't at all. I still like pizza a lot. You'll have enough... Yeah, actually, that's true. Um, same with gasoline. If you drink a gallon of gasoline, you'll have enough calories for the rest of your life. Hell yeah, based. With the scow body? Don't worry, you missed the important part where we talked about Vouch. Um, that was terrible, so I'm glad you missed it. I think I lost like 10 viewers doing that, which is fair because Vouch's argument is so bad that it should have that visceral reaction from people. Um, I respect the commitment to, commitment to pettiness. I genuinely think that when it comes to stuff like that, a lot of like debate bro streamers genuinely just don't have an argument. They just don't think their position is through far enough that when they get co like cornered, it's like, have you seen that infamous thing with Jordan Peterson where he was on an interview show and talking about um, the court case that was recent at the time here in the United States where a same-sex couple tried to force a Christian baker to bake a cake for their wedding. And he said no on religious grounds, and they sued him. So Jordan Peterson was asked pretty much point blank, um, do you think that was a, like a good ruling? Because the court ruled in favor of the baker. And Jordan Peterson was like, well, yeah, because we shouldn't force people to do things. To which the interviewer then replied, what about getting rid of segregated areas and restaurants? That was a good thing that we increased accessibility for serving people there. And this is like the most basic counter argument to Peterson's position. And he didn't have an answer for it. Because the real reason, if you look at the court case, is because the court ruled that baking a cake is art. And so forcing you to make a work of art is compelled speech, which is a violation of your First Amendment. That was what the court actually ruled on. That was why the case went that way. He didn't know anything about it. So, like, I don't know, like, if you would actually kept up with it at all, he would, like, he would know that. That was the I mean, real yeah, reason. The, the funny thing is, they really kind of kept going around the bakers asking for one, and they finally found one that said no, and then they went to it for it. So it's just like, you know, they were asking for it in the first place, which was, you know, eh. Yeah, it's, I don't know, I'm getting it's off It's a practical of... case in either way, but I mean, like, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm going off on random political rants again. Also, good night. <laughs> um, with cool it being after dark, whatever. To go. I mean, yeah, but like normally, cool kid after dark is like thirty people, not fucking ninety. This is a little bit. Now, scary. Yeah, ninety people. Good lord. Um, people don't get to sit here and listen to me. Mostly, this is just me clowning on people that talk politics, as I despise most of them. Um, was the baker under duress? I don't know if that's. <laughs> You can find a video summarizing the court case, honestly. It was so long ago, but it makes a fool of himself is the one thing he knows how to do. Okay, untapped genre, everyone. Jordan Peterson YouTube poops are like the funniest genre of Jordan Peterson anything to exist. Um, Nitro and I went through a whole playlist of them one night, and it was just like the funniest shit. Highly recommend. Yeah, rats burst asunder from the realm of the rats and began to dance <laughs> demonically. That video is so fucking funny. That's why, actually, dickandnuts.com is from one of those YouTube poops. Um, ben Shapiro was in it, and he jokes saying, um, go to my website, dickandballs.com. That one was taken, <laughs> but Dick and Nuts was available for, like, $1 for a year. So I bought it. They want the new update. Um, Spark notes on the new update. Dante is overpowered as shit, and it's unironically probably going to get nerfed. And Naros is like a decent B tier frame now, in my opinion. He's pretty good. Um, I think his rework went well. Tons of the new augments are really good and really fun. Um, and then all the others, like Netracell drop changes and all that stuff, has all generally been very positive. I think the game has really broadened its scope and who you can play effectively in higher level content now. Void Shell likability tier list. I mean, you can watch it if you want to. I need to order a pizza. Please hurry up. Fucking <laughs> open a new tab, head ass. Um. And loving new Nara so far. I think he's a lot of fun. And like I don't feel like he's like fuck busted levels of powerful, but he does have a gameplay loop that feels like it's unique to him. Let me put it that way. Sometimes when you can revive with Naros nonstop. As far as I'm aware, how that works is every time he dies, it takes progressively more and more melee hits to revive himself until he dies. So Um because of that fact, eventually you'll reach a point where you take so many hits you can't do it in time, is the the rationale. Um, with the new flesh texture, I, maybe we'll have to read. Maybe we'll get Purple Flirt back on for a new Void to ability tier list. So hurry up, fucking hell. So the power creep raises to the point Nitro Cells become standard? I mean, you know, probably. I still think that, honestly, Nitro Cells are easy as shit, but I think, really, it's going to be Deep Arca Media that starts putting some irons in the or uh like you know to the grindstone on that see who's really unable to play that kind of content but i genuinely think in the current state of the game everyone should be able to at least do it also yeah i agree i wish swarm stacked a bit faster that's my main gripe with them uh what do you primarily put time into games other than warframe i've been playing a lot of helldivers 2 recently i've been playing synthetic 1 and synthetic 2 um Black Ops Cold War is a game that I have a lot of fondness for. Black Ops 3 is also a great game. Um, Ultra Kill is a game I like a lot. I play For Honor sometimes. Um, what else? I'm a big fan of the Metroid series, but I haven't played one of those games in a while. I played through Trilogy at the end of last year, and that was kind of the last time I had touched that. Um, Synthetic mentioned. I see another uh, person of culture. Hell yeah, Synthetic. Hell yeah. yeah. Um... But, uh, what else? Hunt Showdown is a game I used to play quite a bit. I haven't played it that much anymore, because kind of the, uh, click surrounding it. It's just people have been busy, but that's a fun game. What else? Let's just consult the thing. Let's just consult... Let's just consult my Steam. Um... A lot of I don't even like that much. <laughs> They're just in my favorites for one reason or another. Nebulous is a fun game. Nebulous. Oh, hell yeah. Man. Yeah. So, oh yeah, I got into the Soul Frame beta, but I haven't played it that much. Or like, sorry, the Soul Frame pre-pre-alpha, as they're calling it. Mm -hmm. Can't show any of that to you guys, because literally anything, sharing anything of it violates the NDA. Um, Like, I can't even share screenshots of it to my friends or anything, unless they also were in the, the in preludes. That's a violation of the NDA. Um, we did another modded Terraria run recently that I accidentally ended way too quickly because I became really overpowered. Um, that was a Calamity run with a few other mods involved. I want to do another one with a few other mods too, but um, you share that it exists r real. They've been very public that they're rolling out that stuff. Um, please for your sanity, quit. Well, I don't play it almost at all anymore. I'll, I'll literally play it like a few times, like once every few months. 
stuff that's pre cold war since they're vulnerable to peer-to-peer -peer attacks yeah i don't play multiplayer i play cold i play call of duty games for the zombies that's genuinely it playing elden ring i've been harassed by several friends to do that i probably will eventually birthday present said it was yeah i was watching spike stream and one of spike's moderators crimson soul um sent me a game called furry feet on steam so that that was interesting <laughs> obviously i declined it and expected them to send it to me again fun story you know i gotta go to i gotta go like we're getting way too late for this but <laughs> i'm getting way too distracted because i haven't streamed in a while and so i'm just getting a ton of shit that i've been thinking about for streams just off my mind all at once funny story there is a game on steam called furry girl it's this shitty oh, yeah. fucking like puzzle porn <laughs> game right Nitro kept sending it to me as a gift. Like, I'd reject it, he'd send it I think it was, like, after the eighth or ninth time. I just accepted it so he'd stop fucking sending it to me. And then, like, two months later, the developers got banned. For a bullshit reason as well. So, yeah, they were making a game where the protagonist was fucking Ricardo Milos, and they got banned for making a scam game. Um, because of that fact. But, so I am now in possession of the rare game Furry Girl. Because... The fucking devs got banned, which I think is hilarious. Um, so there's that, I guess. My favorite game. Um, before you go, important question: best Warframe feat. If I had to pick a best Warframe feat, it's Dayform Equinox Prime because she's wearing Skechers. Check this shit. Check this. I know that the cool kid is still there. I hope he's not too intrusive. But check this. Dayform Equinox. Look. The shoes have tongues on them. They're Skechers. She's actually unironically wearing Skechers. It's fucking hilarious. Like, genuinely, I think it's fucking hilarious. You know, we can we can just hold on. We can retire these. We can retire these. Um, I'm going to move the pug to my just stuff folder. Um, What's the... Oh, yeah, this. <laughs> Um, the game purpose was to sell Steam profile customization. Real. Um, but yeah, she straight up has the fucking like light up sketchers or like Heelys. I think it's hilarious. Um, the pug. I'm sorry. He's going to. He's he's still here. He's just in a folder now. He's just in a folder. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's still here. Watch. He's still here. He's just hidden. He's just cloaked. You know what else is still. Oh my god, before I go, when was the last time we looked at Funny Cam? I forgot this was here. Huh. What? Oh my god, what happened to Funny Cam? What the fuck happened to Funny Cam? What did I oh, do to it last on. time? <laughs> what the fuck is this? It looks like a Cruelty Squad <laughs> texture. Hell yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't remember. I genuinely haven't looked at it in like six months. What the fuck happened to it? Um, yeah, I think we're gonna go. We're... It's fucking 6.05 a.m. It's a good thing both of us don't work tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, because I'd fucking regret this really hard. Extra crispy? Extra crispy's a fucking understatement. I fucking triple fried that shit. Um, the beacons are lit. Gondor calls for Aegis <laughs> to re You guys want to see another thing I still have? I still have this. You guys remember this stream? Where I just kept adding a new live reaction for every five decrees I got, and then I duplicated it into the middle, and then added another little one there? Good time, good time. Ugh. Peak stream? That was, that was some psychotic shit, I'm not gonna lie. That was like off-the-meds kind of shit. Scarlet propaganda? Yeah, that one's still on there. I don't remember. I don't think Blue had one on this one. Evelyn has one. That's the, like, second from the uh, top right was Evelyn. Um, and then, yeah, Scarlet Propaganda is in there. Um, I guess there's Wimmy, the live grandma resident table. I thought that meme fucks with me so much, dude. That meme fucks with me so much. Um, mini ticket nuts. But, yeah, I'm, uh... I'm gonna have to go. I need to go to bed. I need to. I need to put the haunts to sleep. I have to tuck him in every night. And by that, I mean I have to throw him in my fucking closet. <laughs> I, I just pick him up and like toss him in there. Just cut him in there, um, so he doesn't. So he's not a problem. Um, 
But yeah, I need to go. It's fucking 6 a.m. I did not mean to stream this late. I've said mm -hmm. way too much shit I wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, so, thank you all for coming. Uh, join the Discord. Watch the VODs. You can become a channel member for like five bucks a month if you want me to, I don't know, DM you gay porn or something. I'm not committing to that, actually. Don't do it for that reason. I'm not <laughs> yeah. doing that. That's my spot. That's my uh, probably. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to say, there's no reason for me to look at porn. He's right there. Anyways. <laughs> um, huge thank you to all the channel members. Like, Napkin and Ellie, you were here right now. Um, but huge thank you to everyone who has become a channel member as well. I really, really appreciate it. It means a lot. Um, if you do want to become a channel member, though, there's, like, a special chat in the Discord where you get access to stuff early and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, though. Don't sweat it, though. It's a whatever thing. Um, I will make porn of your Sona now. Well, I did say that if I was ever saw a Cool Kid 369 tag on E621, I would kill myself. Thank you, Sloth Napkin, as well, for using all the Cool Kid member emojis. God bless. Um, I wanted to add those as regular emojis, but you can't for non-members, I don't think, unless you, like, get a certain goal. Anyways... Um, oh, before I go, 25k Q&A is coming out somewhat soon. I have to record that still, but it won't take too much effort. Um, Kahoot stream is happening soon, too. That's something that is, I want to do maybe first or second week of April is going to be that. I'll announce it ahead of time in the Discord on the community tab so people can, like, you know, be there if they want to be. Um, but that's definitely going to be happening soon, too. Also, a thing I didn't mention in that was I wanted to do a fashion reel video. I was actually deliberately waiting for this update for Dante and the new Sevagoth skin. Um, yeah, I want to do a Kahoot stream where I stream a Kahoot of channel trivia um, to celebrate the 25k stuff. So that's happening soon. Fashion reel will eventually happen, but God, that video is going to suck ass to film. Um, whatever the fuck else I said, dude. I don't know. It's fucking 6 a.m., dude. I don't know. I've been up since, like, noon. Like, cut me a fucking... Come, give me a break. Um... <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to go, so you all have a nice uh, morb or what have you. Um, and yeah, that'll be. You have any parting words, any parting thoughts, Horsey? Exactly what I expected. Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah, you'll have a good one. See ya.